Hi guys, it's Kino. Welcome to another video. So in today's pick a card, we are going to be finding out all about your next significant relationship. This is going to include both physical and personality traits of the person who is coming in, what the relationship is like between the two of you, any significant places or time frames that you should know about when it comes to your union, and advice from your spirit guides. I'll go a little bit more into the details of this reading after you pick your group, but for now, let's show you guys your options. So there are four readings for you guys to choose from today, and each group has a different crystal as well as a different tarot deck. As you can see, this is what the decks look like from the back, but in just a second, I'm going to show you one card from each of the decks so that you can see what the front artwork looks like as well, and I'm going to be showing showing you guys the two of cups because I just think that is very fitting for a relationship reading. So without further ado, let's give you a close up look at each of your options. Option number one, your stone is amber agate and your deck is the new moon tarot and this is what the two of cups looks like. Option number two, your stone is selenite, your deck is the gummy bear tarot and this is what the two of cups looks like. Option number three, your stone is fuchsite, your deck is the tarot of the divine, and this is what the two of cups looks like. Option number four, your stone is amethyst, your deck is the pastel journey tarot, and this is what the two of cups looks like. So just in case you guys need a little bit more time to pick, here are all of your options laid out side by side so that you can compare them and see which one is calling to you the most. Take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with number one. Hi, number ones. So if you guys chose the Amber Agate and the New Moon Tarot, this is going to be a reading all about your next significant relationship. So just before we get into this reading, I do want to do a sort of disclaimer that this reading is not going to tell you who you have to be with or who you are inevitably going to end up with. Please remember that you always have free will and it is completely up to you whom you choose to pursue and whom you choose to give your energy to. What we're going to look at in this reading is who will be entering or re-entering your life next, who you're in energetic alignment with, and with whom there is potential for a significant relationship. You are very welcome to watch this reading with somebody specific that you have in mind, um, but I do also feel called to encourage you guys to keep an open mind to whoever does want to come through today, whether that is somebody you already know or not. So with all of that being said, let's get into your reading. I actually just want to put this aside for a second because I'm going to start off the reading with the traits of your person. And for that, I'm going to use my homemade flashcard decks. So this deck is of physical traits and this deck is of personality traits. For the most part, I might have mixed them up a little bit, but that was my goal when I made these decks. And then we're also going to use an astrology deck to get a little bit more insight on their personality and see if there are any um, significant zodiac signs that you guys should know about. So... You can also think of this part of the reading as like an energy check if this sounds like somebody um, that you would like or if it sounds like somebody that you have in mind. This can be your check to see if this is the right group for you. Actually, I'm going to start with I'm going to start with the personality. So, first <laughs> I don't know why I felt called to put this one, but we have always cold. So I was thinking of one of those people who is always complaining about being cold or who is wearing a lot of layers. This person might wear a lot of like big cozy sweaters or they have really cold hands and feet. There's some kind of random ones in here, just so you guys know. We also have quick wit. So this would be somebody who is very clever. They always have the best comebacks. They always have the best jokes. They always have the solution to your problem. You can't really pull the wool over the eyes of this person because they will figure you out. Um, but when I wrote this card, I did get a very... A very humorous vibe. I think their wit is mostly used to make people laugh and I think this person has 
this very <laughs> talented way of pointing out the absurdity in situations and kind of making light of it so that it doesn't seem so um, terrible. <laughs> We also have observant. So that actually ties in really, really well to the quick wit. This person will notice everything. So they will notice the subtleties in a social situation. They will notice the slightest changes in your appearance or the slightest changes in your attitude. Going back to that feeling of not being able to trick this person, I think that you also could not lie to this person about how you feel or what is going on. Even if you show up with a smile on your face, yes, I had an amazing day they will be like something's wrong you're hiding something you're annoyed you're frustrated so this person can kind of see right through you and really pick up on how you are feeling we have easy going I love that. So this would be somebody who has more of a mellow temper they're kind of up for anything um, I can't imagine a lot of heated arguments or heated fighting with this person. And then we have temper right after, so easygoing temper. Yeah, I think this will be a very gentle and kind person. Very non-judgmental as well. If you're the type to get anxious, like when things are going wrong, when things aren't going according to plan, if you're the type to really worry, I think that this person would be amazing to have around because they'll just have this way of calming you down, again, of finding humor and finding light in the situation and reminding you that nothing is a big deal. Like nothing is such a big deal that they want to see you upset. And so that carries through in the way that they help you work through problems, in the way that they confront you if there's ever a disagreement. Like they never want to alarm you or hurt you or make you upset. They have a very, very calm demeanor, which I think will have a wonderful influence on you. And then we also have conservative. So this could mean many different things. It could mean that this person is conservative with money, for example, like they really save their money. It could mean that they are conservative in the way that they dress. I'm going back to that kind of always cold thing. <laughs> Maybe this person wears a lot of layers or covers up quite a bit. Um, this can also be in terms of their dating style or their like affection style so this person might not be super into pda or super into like grand public gestures they might kind of keep that more for private situations also when it comes to dating they might take things very slow this might be somebody who really like they really don't rush the building of a relationship they might be more conservative when it comes to like physical or sexual expressions as well and then of course it could also be talking about the political conservative although that wasn't really what I was thinking of when I wrote this but yes that concludes the personality traits of course we're going to look at a lot more when we get into the tarot and the oracle cards but this is what we have for now so I'm also going to take a couple of physical traits we have muscular hmm. and okay so you guys got three we have same background so again this one can mean many things it could be that you guys have a similar upbringing that you are from the same culture from the same country it could also be something like you guys have a similar educational background or a similar professional background or of course a combination of those and then we have taller so this would be somebody who is taller than you or who is taller than the average in terms of their gender or in terms of their ethnicity or something like that okay so i'm gonna move these over here because we do have <laughs> a shit ton of cards today and i'm kind of worried how they're all gonna fit so i'm gonna try to make these compact and we're gonna take a look at the zodiac signs now so Again, this could be a confirmation if somebody that you have in mind has the zodiac signs that appear here, um, but this can also just be talking about their general energy. So like if the sign Aries comes out, they could literally be an Aries or they could just have many traits that are reminiscent of Aries energy or Aries energy is dominant in their chart. Okay, 
so for group one's person, we have fifth house with pleasure, romance, creativity, fertility, sex, children, childlike fun, joy, love, passion, entertainment, art, culture, and hobbies. I really, really like this deck. This is my first time using it, but wow we get so much information so the fifth house is related to leo energy so this person could have leo in their chart or they could have a lot of fifth house placements it's interesting that this card talks about like pleasure and sex and childlike fun um i was kind of getting the vibe that this person might not be so public with that kind of stuff like they are more serious or more conservative in public but i think that when they are alone with you that's when they really let loose they become really really funny and silly and childlike and they also show more of their um, physically affectionate side as well and more of their passionate side i'm also getting that if this person were to take you on an extravagant date they would want to take you on a trip like they would want to take you to some kind of resort or like a really nice villa i'm feeling some kind of romantic getaway like that so yes, when it comes to their romantic expressions, they do go above and beyond, but I think they keep it more for you. Like they're not the type to show those big gestures in front of a lot of people. Maybe this person is a little bit shy, but then when they're around you, they feel super confident. They feel like a superstar. I feel like you really bring that you know, confidence, strutting your stuff, Leo energy out of this person. And you might be one of the few people who really, really gets to see them shine and who really gets to see them loud and proud like this also i do feel like saying with the lollipop here that this person might have a sweet tooth so that's something to keep in mind if you ever want to like cheer them up or give them a pick-me-up i think they would really like sweets or some kind of food um we also have creativity, art, culture, hobbies, entertainment. It looks like this is a very creative person and someone who really enjoys art, whether they enjoy, you know, just being a consumer, a spectator of art, or they may even create art themselves. Um, but this might be somebody who would like to go to like concerts with you or museums or art galleries or movies or plays, you know, somewhere where they can view and appreciate art with you. And in fact, if you haven't met this person yet, this may be like one of the places where you could meet this person at some kind of event where art is being appreciated and enjoyed. Again, whether they are spectating that or whether they are, um, whether they are performing that. And we also have messages about children and fertility. So this might be somebody who would like to have children in the future or children are a very big part of their life. Um, maybe they have like a big family or they have nieces and nephews or younger siblings or something like that. It seems like the energy of children, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> the energy of children is around this person, if that makes sense. Maybe they work with children, like teaching children or like, doing art with children or something like that and let's get one more Ooh, we also have mars so maybe this person has mars in the fifth house um or they could be wait they could be a sagittarius rising because then they would have aries in the fifth house or they could be a cancer rising because then they would have scorpio in the fifth house Mm -hmm. um <laughs> so we have this is aries and and scorpio energy by the way so assertive aggression war aries scorpio tuesday maybe you'll meet this person on a tuesday <laughs> or they're born on a tuesday or something confidence impulsiveness strength action sexuality passion desire and determination so there's a lot of parallels between these two cards there's a lot of fiery energy and a lot of masculine energy coming through as well there is this highlight on like sex and passion so this could be um indicating like a really amazing sex life with this person um if you are a sexual person and you'll enjoy that kind of relationship with them it does seem like they are more of the like dominant type <laughs> like dominant and very passionate and this is somebody who will not like they will not give up until you're happy 
And I think that that really goes to any area of life. Like they will go to any lengths, like just to see you happy. They will go to any lengths, like to make sure that you are comfortable. Um, this person is really a fighter, but when it comes to you and when it comes to making you happy, they have this really nice, um, this really nice gentleness to them, almost like they are a warrior who's going to protect you, who's going to keep you safe. Um, it's also interesting that we have the duality of like easygoing and temper, because now that I see this Mars energy, it does look like this person has a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of that spark in them where like you better not piss them off. But I, I don't think that this would ever be directed at you. It's more like, you better not cross me or you better not cross my person, AKA you. <laughs> like nobody better hurt you, nobody better mess with you. Um, I also think that this person is very smart and very competent. So it could be that sometimes when they are surrounded by people like who don't know what they're doing or who are messing up a lot, they could get a little bit annoyed with that. It's kind of like Virgo-y energy because I have a lot of Virgo or even Mars in Virgo people in my life who have that trait where like they just have a very, very low tolerance for like messiness and people not knowing what they're doing. I think that this person would really like to, you know, stay on top of things and stay organized and have things go smoothly. It's like but they put on this gentle face for you. Like they they would never want you to be worried. They would never want you to see the consequences of things going messy. It's like they want to protect you from that and they just want you to feel good at all times. And they'll always be strong for you. They'll always put on that brave face for you. Okay, so, oh yes. And there's one more Oracle deck that I want to use here. And with this one, we're just gonna get three keywords for your relationship. So we have completion, ending, results, rewards. We have <laughs> passion. I think that's like the third card that has the word passion on it. Creative energy, enthusiasm, drive. That matches really, really well with the fifth house and Mars cards. I'm also noticing there's a ton of red colors here. And then we have present, mindfulness, silence, meditate, breathe. This is so interesting. It's like, I'm sure as we go through the cards, you can kind of start to see the duality in this person. They have this like raging fire inside of them. And that includes passion. That includes creativity. That includes their fighting spirit. But when you are in their presence, you feel calm, you feel safe. So it's almost like this beautiful contained fire that is there. Oh my God, my ears are ringing. <laughs> this beautiful contained fire that is there to keep you warm, that is there to sustain and nourish you. But if it needs to, that fire can unleash and, and burn everything again to protect you. It's like the duality of their fire or the duality of fire in general, right? It can keep us alive, but it can also destroy us. And there's definitely that fire inside this person. Um, passion, I feel like I don't really need to further explain that much because it's come through in like <laughs> every Oracle card so far. We have present, which I think is really speaking to this person's ability to bring you back down to earth and to calm you down. Um, I think that this person will help you to stay in the present moment and really enjoy every day um, without worrying about the past or worrying about the future. And I think that goes really well with that childlike fun and joy that we get with the fifth house. Like they bring you back to the present moment and remind you like, we will never have this moment again. So let's relax and let's have fun. Like literally this present moment is all we have and this is our gift. I'm thinking of that cheesy thing like what is it? Like that's why it's called the present because it's a gift. <laughs> um I think that that could definitely be a philosophy of this person and something that they will really make you feel when you guys are together. Like even if it's not um intentional, it's just you enjoy your time with them so much that you forget about the world around you, you forget about the past, you forget about the future, and you're just here with them 
in the now. With this completion, I definitely think that many of you guys are coming to the end of some significant cycle in your life, letting go of things that don't serve you anymore. And this is definitely making space for this relationship to come in. But completion is also making me think of the world, like the world as the completion of a cycle, as an accomplishment, because this card also talks about results and rewards. So I think that within this relationship, you two are going to have the privilege of witnessing some of each other's greatest successes and accomplishments and get to be there supporting each other and cheering each other on like one of the really great gifts of this relationship is getting to watch each other's growth and getting to support each other in that and i can just feel this like immense pride that you two have for each other and all of the things that you are accomplishing so this concludes like the energy check type part of the reading i'm gonna drink some water because I can already tell I'm going to be talking a lot in this one. And let's move on now. Do you guys hear the doorbell? <laughs> let's move on to your tarot. So this is the new moon tarot that you guys chose. We're going to pull a few cards from here to see more about me, <laughs> what your relationship is like. We have the six of cups. We have the ace of wands. Yeah, this, this makes a ton of sense. We have the Hermit, so there's Virgo energy, which is funny because I was picking up on Virgo energy before, even though like it didn't appear anywhere. Yeah, this person might definitely have Mars in Virgo. They could also be a Taurus rising with Virgo in the fifth house. And then, okay, you guys have, I'll keep these together because they did come out together. We have the Queen of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles. And then I also have um, clarifying Oracle cards for these. So to clarify the Six of Cups, we have Spirit of Gratitude. To clarify the Ace of Wands, we have Standing Stones with the message Passage. To clarify the Hermit, we have Dragon's Horde, protecting the future. And to clarify the Queen of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles, we have Starry Canyon, look for the light in the dark, optimism, hope, inspiration. Okay, so I'm just going to go through all of these in order now, starting with our beautiful Six of Cups and Spirit of Gratitude. Um, the first thing that I wanted to mention with this card is that this is also a card that can talk about children, childhood, childlikeness. So there is really a lot of childlike energy coming through in this reading. Um, this could be, again, somebody who really wants children, really likes children, or has a lot of children around them. Um, or it can just be highlighting that your inner child comes out when you are together. Um, but the Six of Cups also talks about very, very familiar soulmates. So I'm pretty sure that you have had many past lives with this person, and this has resulted in a deep level of familiarity as soon as you meet them, or even before you meet them, and also like a deep level of nostalgia or deja vu. So when you meet this person in this lifetime, it will automatically feel like you have known them for a million years. Even if you cannot really put your finger on it, your soul will remember. So that could be another indicator. Like if you guys are trying to figure out if this is somebody you already know or not, there will be something that is, and I want to say eerily, <laughs> there will be something that is eerily familiar about them. And you might be racking your brain trying to figure out like, where did I meet you before? Where have I seen you before? I could swear that I've known you before. If you've ever had this happen to you, it is a really, a really freaky feeling, like a weird deja vu. And the Six of Cups for me is like such a strong familiarity that you only really need to see, oh my God, I just looked up and the camera said 22, 22. You, you only really need like a morsel of this person's energy to, recognize them and i often give this kind of hyperbolic example of like you only need to smell them and you will know it's them or you only need to see a strand of their hair and you will know it's them 
it's like you can recognize them from afar. Maybe a more realistic example is like, let's say you were at some kind of party or some kind of gathering and you hear their voice. They're talking to someone else on the other end of the room, but just you just hear that voice and you're like, this is someone important. I know this person. And you look over and it's, it's them. And then you're like, shit, how do I know them? really really deep level of familiarity um the six of cups is also like a deep peace and a deep serenity so that really matches nicely with the present card here and just how calm and grounded you will make each other feel i'm also thinking of this as like a deep compassion and a deep generosity towards each other there is really nothing that you would not give to the other there is nothing that you would not do for the other i kind of like that oh my gosh I was gonna say, I like that there's, that's not even a cup, that's somebody's head. <laughs> but doesn't it kind of look like a cup? It looks like a flower growing in a, in a pot. And that is exactly what the Six of Cups looks like in many decks. It's that image of the child giving a potted flower to the other child. And this looks exactly like it, which is really cool. Um, so I see a lot of generosity and a lot of gratitude here. And what I really love about this combined energy is that like it, it's not a question no matter what you'll always be there for each other and give to each other but even though it's a given it's never taken for granted like there's always that appreciation there's always that gratitude you will always you know thank each other even if let's say you got married and you were together for 20 years like you're never going to take for granted the things that you do for each other you're always going to say thank you you're always going to show your appreciation i also feel this great deal of respect for each other's time and energy like there's this feeling of i never want to impose i never want to assume that you're going to be there that you're going to do this for me like I'm never going to assume if I need something from you, I will always ask. I won't tell you, I will ask. It's like, I don't know what the opposite of demanding is, but it's like this person would never demand from you or would never um, impose themselves on you. Even if for you, it's like a given, like, of course I'm going to help you. But it's like, it's the principle of it, right? Like, I never want you, I never want it to come across like I feel entitled to your time or energy or something like that. So uh, there's that level of respect there and checking in on boundaries and i feel like this will be um, a continual process like making sure that you're okay with the boundaries of the relationship because again there's that feeling of not wanting to assume like just because you were okay with this a few months ago you're gonna be okay with it now and so i just see really amazing communication i feel like within this relationship there would be very very few um, opportunities for misunderstanding or miscommunication because you are so clear and open and like not um, assuming with each other. There's a great level of like respect and appreciation and openness there. Um, with this card, this is actually related to the crown chakra. So very interesting that that's coming out with the Six of Cups, which talks about this eerie familiarity. Um, the familiarity that you feel with each other definitely goes beyond this body and beyond this lifetime. That is definitely your souls recognizing each other. Also, before you meet this person or shortly after meeting them, you may be receiving a lot of downloads about them and about your future together, which prove to be true. Almost like you're receiving some sort of prophecy or having some kind of um, visions about the relationship. And I also think that you guys are very, very good at reading each other. And we even saw that earlier um, in this reading, that they always know how you're feeling. They always know what you need and if something is wrong. Just like, I really hope that I'm painting the picture well, but I just see excellent, excellent communication between the two of you. So moving on here, we have the Ace of Wands and we have Standing Stones with Passage. Um, the Ace of Wands is another card that is always a huge indicator of passion for me. So I believe that this is like the fourth time <laughs> that this message of passion has come out in your reading. Again, if you guys are sexual people, then this can definitely be talking about the amazing sexual connection that exists between the two of you. Um, but no matter what your sexuality is like, this can also talk about really igniting each other's passion for life, like just reigniting the zest for life within each other. 
this person is really into art, culture, entertainment. I think this person has a lot of hobbies. So one really happy blessing of coming together with this person could be that they introduce you to new passions. They introduce you to new hobbies. They introduce you to your new favorite artists or your new favorite movie or your new favorite food. And they remind you how vibrant and colorful and interesting and beautiful this world is. I'm thinking of like a whole new world in Aladdin. <laughs> like this person can show you the world and you can show them the world. You can show them your world and you can exchange your prized beauties. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You can exchange your passions with each other. And when you're together, literally the sky looks like this. I often feel with when the Ace of Wands comes into your life, it's like your life is going from black and white to color. So your sky is going like from a dull gray color to literally rainbow galaxies. You're starting to see, yeah, like you're starting to see the world in fresh new eyes like a child would like everything is beautiful everything is is magical again um there's also something about physical activity with the ace of wands which again could be talking about your physical relationship but um you could also get into like exercise or get into some kind of physical activity when you're with this person maybe you like going for walks together or you like dancing together or you like going hiking together or something like that there's this feeling of you guys um like moving your bodies together <laughs> and also the ace of wands can talk about deepening a connection with your higher self so just well at least that's how i read it so just looking back at this part where we spoke about your psychic abilities heightening and receiving downloads um, you might be really getting acquainted with your higher self and remembering who you truly are as a result of coming together with this person like they help to open the passage open the gateway for your truest most authentic self to come out because you feel so safe with this person because you feel grounded with them and because you feel excited you feel ecstatic you feel passionate and with this passage i really think that once you meet and come together with this person there's that feeling of nothing will ever be the same whether it's like whether we end up together forever or not i will forever be different it's like that song because i knew you i have been changed for good is that from wicked i think so um which is a musical, which you guys might be seeing together. Uh, but yes, there's that feeling of like, once I was activated by you, once you came into my life, I will never be the same. And I will forever be grateful for you, no matter what happens from here on out, because you've changed my life for the better. So now we have the Hermit with Dragon's Horde and Protecting the Future. It's kind of interesting. These both both of these cards have lantern-y vibes to them. Like this is literally a lantern, but this is like, I don't know, doesn't it kind of look like he's holding a lantern or the dragon is a lantern? Is it a reach? Maybe. <laughs> um, dragons might be a significant spirit animal for you guys, or um, this person could be born in the year of the dragon. Of course, that is not going to apply to everybody, but the year of the dragon is um, 2000, 1988. Did I do that right? Yes, 1976. And then like keep going back 12 years like that. Um, again, that's just gonna be for a select few of you, but if you have somebody in your mind or you are year of the dragon, this could definitely be a confirmation for you. But yeah, lanterns might also be significant somehow. I'm not really sure, <laughs> um, but I just really got into lanterns for a minute there. So I don't know if that's like, significant for anybody. Um, with the hermit here, I definitely think that there is a spiritual side to this person. I think that they might already practice uh, things like meditation, practice mindfulness exercises, practice breathing exercises. Um, they might practice these things to get grounded and centered. I think that this is a highly reflective person as well. 
they really, really have the ability of introspection. They really, really have the ability of seeing the link between their inner world and how that is reflected in their outer world. This is somebody who has really taken their own life and their own happiness into their own hands. And they really, really have the power of insight and critical thinking, which I might be wrong, like this is just my feeling, but I, I kind of have a feeling that these are things that you can't teach to somebody or that are very difficult to teach to somebody. Like when it comes to the ability to be insightful, when it comes to the ability to look within and see how you are the common denominator in everything that happens in your life and also the ability to think critically. So not to just take things at face value, but you know, to to question things, to question why we believe the things we do, to question why the world works the way it does. And like, just because it is this way, it doesn't mean that it should be this way. You know, that ability to question and say, what if things were, what if things were different? And to come to your own conclusions. I think that when it comes to this person, like I can see you guys enjoying so much entertainment and art together like that, like we said, and it's like, Talking about the art or talking about what you just saw together is like equally as fun as experiencing the thing itself, if that makes sense. So like, let's say you guys went to watch a two hour movie together, like watching the movie, that experience with them is so interesting. But then like on the drive home or like going back home and then talking about that movie <laughs> for hours is like equally as interesting it's like the experiences you have together are just the gift that keeps on giving because you experience them and then you get to talk about them you get to share your ideas and contemplate about them and like what do you think this was saying about life what do you think um what point do you think the artist was trying to make there and it like opens up this whole discussion whereas like some people will just watch it and be like, oh, that was cool, which <laughs> I, I'm kind of one of those people <laughs> when it comes to certain things. I wish that I could have more that ability to get into like the symbolism and what do you think this was a commentary about? Because a lot of that stuff goes over my head, but <laughs> I think that this person is really, yeah, like this person is really observant when it comes to the deeper meaning behind things and like drawing their own meaning from it and not just like taking what is spoon fed to them. They really have the ability of going deep. So this is somebody who will be very, very interesting partner um, in the intellectual sense. And I also think that this is somebody who really sees the interconnectedness of everything in this world. Like they see the main themes that every human lives through they see how we're all just trying our best. They see how we're all connected and how everything is connected. And we're really not so different when it comes down to it. Um, I'm also, this person has a lot of balls is <laughs> the way it's coming through. Maybe I should say they have a lot of guts. Maybe that's a nicer expression, but it's like, they would totally not be afraid to go against the popular opinion. So for example, if there was some injustice in this world, but everybody thought it was okay, like everybody was just blind to it, they wouldn't be scared to speak up, even if that would turn a bunch of people against them. Like they're not afraid to stand up and be like, no, that's fucked up. Or like, no, I disagree with that. Or, you know, everybody is, they're not afraid to be the black sheep, basically. Everybody's thinking this way, but I think that way. And I'm not afraid to say that. So this is not really somebody who would fall to peer pressure. Again, this is someone who comes, does their own thinking and it comes to their own conclusions because that's what the hermit is really all about. Like the hermit just goes to the beat of his own drum. Um, he goes he's not afraid to go in there with his lantern and and find it them find the answers himself it's like the the visual i'm getting is like there's this dark room and the powers that be <laughs> are telling the masses what is in the dark room and the masses are like well i'm too scared to go in there and check i'll just take their word for it you know whatever they say is in there it's in there i'm not going to check it's dark in there and your person would be like I call bullshit. I'm going to go in there with my lantern and see for myself. So like they have that bravery to discover the truth and to form their own opinions, even if it's against like what everybody else says. And I also think with this dragon's horde and protecting the future, this person has such 
such a deep compassion for humanity. That's interesting. Like that's the interpretation that I'm getting from it. Um, this is a new deck for me, so I'm honestly not sure what the like what would you call it? What the standard meanings are of all of the cards, but that's really what I'm getting from this. Like a really, really deep compassion for humanity. And it goes back to that, you know, feeling that we are all connected, feeling that we're all one, that at the end of the day, we're all going through the same things. I think this could be somebody who is a little bit pessimistic about the future of the world at this point, like when it comes to, when it comes to the environment, when it comes to politics, when it comes to the way we discriminate against each other, when it comes to the way people are suffering and a lot of people go unsupported, like they could kind of feel that like the future is grim. And so maybe they try not to get into this energy too much. Like if they get too far in the rabbit hole, they, they could become a little bit pessimistic. Um, but for the most part, I think they just try to live in the present and they try to they try to enjoy the moment because at the end of the day, there's always going to be darkness in the world and there's always going to be light in the world. Um, and every day, like we have a choice how we're going to live. Now, I don't think by any means this person like ignores problems in their life, but they just you know what I mean? When it comes to their day to day mentality, I think they do everything that they can to stay in a positive one because they recognize how important that is. So finally, oh my gosh, <laughs> finally we have the Queen of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles that came out together. And then, oh, look at, oh my God, I didn't even realize this card. Like I know that I pulled it and I said the things on it, but I totally forgot about it until now. And it literally says, look for the light in the dark. <laughs> so it matches really well with that hermit energy and like trying to find optimism, trying to find hope and inspiration, you know, trying to find hope for the future. And this reminds me a lot of the star card in tarot. So there could be some Aquarius energy present here as well. Um, as much as some things might look grim, I do think that this person is determined to create a happy future with you and determined to see a happy world. Um, there was that message of, you know, children, this person wanting children or having children in their life. And there's this feeling of like, I want my future children or I want the children in my life or the children of the world to see a happy future. I want to leave this world better for the children, for the next generation. And almost like this person has, I don't, maybe a sense of duty is too strong, but like obligation is too strong of a word as well. But maybe like responsibility as a citizen of the earth, I feel a responsibility to leave this world better for the next generation. Um, and to do that, they're not afraid to ruffle feathers. Like they're not afraid to stand up for injustice. They're not afraid to say the unpopular opinion. Like they're just gonna tell it like it is. Um, okay, so let's look at these tarot cards here. Ah, this deck is black and it's really beautiful, but my thumbprints, <laughs> my, my fingerprints stand out a lot on it. I hope that, well, maybe now you're gonna see it because I mentioned it. Maybe I, just, I shouldn't have said anything. Um, but we have the Queen of Cups and we have the Nine of Pentacles. So when it comes to your careers, we did have the same background card here, but I'm kind of getting the feeling that maybe you guys have different careers or you have different goals when it comes to your profession because the feeling I'm getting from these two cards together, like with the nine of pentacles, this is a very like independent energy. So when it comes to your career, your livelihoods and stuff, I do feel for the most part that those things would be separate. Like you have your own thing going on. They have their own thing going on. You're very much on your own paths. Um, but you do offer each other a great deal of emotional support with the Queen of Cups. Sort of the vibe that I was getting with these two cards together is like when it comes to supporting each other in your careers and in your goals, maybe there's not much materially that you can do. You know, for example, your fields are entirely different. So, you know, I'm not going to have a lot of 
networking or a lot of collect connections to help you with. I'm not really going to have like books or resources that could help you because I'm not like into what you're doing. You know, like, I hope you guys know what I mean, but I can always be there when you come home from work and, and listen to you vent about your day, or I can be there to listen to your good news and cheer you on. I can be there to hug you and, and to bring you tea when you're stressed, when you're tired. So the support that you can give each other in terms of your goals, I think it comes a lot like more so from a more emotional support and from your nurturing of each other. And of course, the way that you inspire each other and make each other excited for the future. So yeah, it kind of seems like you have your own things going on. That's not to say that you could never like collaborate on something together in the future. Um, but this is just the vibe that I'm getting. And I also get the vibe that both of you are going to be very successful in your respective paths because the Nine of Pentacles is someone that's just like kicking ass, <laughs> living their best life, successful, abundant. I feel like definitely you guys will also bring your own wealth to the table like you'll both be abundant you'll both be supporting yourselves again not to say that you cannot lean on each other um but that's just yeah that's just the vibe that i'm getting right now so oh okay we're gonna see if there are any places or time frames that could be significant to this relationship Okay, so we have seventh house. Okay. <laughs> and we have descendant, which is the seventh house. So yeah, these are literally the same message. Um, first thing that came to my mind when I saw seventh house is that you would be approaching them. Like you will be the one to make the first move towards them because seventh house is the house of the other. It's the point in your birth chart where you're like interacting with other people. Whereas, oh my gosh, I almost, <laughs> I like balanced this deck precariously on my lap and I almost dropped half of it on the floor. Um, if we got the first house here, for example, then I would think they are coming to you because the first house represents you. Um, but you are going into the seventh house. You are going into the space to interact with others. So, and I was just thinking that I was just suspecting that when I got this card and then descendant came out, which is like literally the same message again to confirm that. So you're going to be starting the conversation with this person. You're going to be like walking up to them. Um, again, when it comes to the place that you're meeting, it could be some kind of like event where art is being enjoyed or performed or maybe that's where you guys are going to have your first date like you're going to go to a movie together or go to a concert together or something like that and then let's also see if there's any time frames that you guys should know about we have virgo so a lot of virgo energy coming through in this reading um virgo season could be an important time And then we also have Cancer. So because Cancer came out after Virgo though, so that's kind of a big window. <laughs> like from Virgo season to Cancer season, it's like September to the following June. Whatever. <laughs> Cancer season and Virgo season could be significant for you guys. Of course, this is a timeless reading and you're free to interpret these however you want. But if Cancer season or Virgo season is coming up at the time that you are watching this or whichever one is coming up next, Sorry, I got a little bit confused there, but just keep an eye out during these seasons. So <laughs> we're going to finish off this reading with these three oracle cards, which are going to be messages from your spirit guides or advice when it comes to this relationship. And we have spiritual connection. I'm not surprised to see that at all because I was feeling that really, really strongly with the six of cups before. A relationship has a connection that goes beyond this lifetime. So yes, you guys... You guys definitely have past lives together and actually maybe this completion that we saw here is like you guys are closing off Ooh, i don't know if you guys could hear that but like a car just started i'm next to a garage so <laughs> like there was a doorbell there's a car starting um when i hear that sound during a reading i'm like ooh, things are getting set into motion um 
I was just gonna say, with this completion here, you and this person could be coming to the end of a tough cycle in your incarnations. Like you're completing a karmic cycle with this person and now you're reaping the rewards in this lifetime. You're reaping a lot of abundance and happiness in this lifetime. Um, but yes, if you feel a strange familiarity to this person, it is because of a past life connection. We have tiger's eye, self-confidence through God confidence. So in addition to dragons, tigers could also be a significant spirit animal. Um, the year of the tiger is 1974, 1986... 1998. <laughs> I really hope that I'm doing those right. I, I've done them so much that I I, I kind of have confidence in myself to get them right, but <laughs> again, that will probably just be for a few of you, but Year of the Tiger could be significant. Believe in yourself by believing in God working through you. So you can really translate this however you want if you resonate with the term God or spirit or the universe. Um, but believe in the divine, basically. Believe in the divine working through you. Many of you guys might be worried if what you are doing, if the path you are taking is conducive to this union, whether you are in fact bringing them closer. And I think you guys, this is a message from your guides to relax because you're already doing everything right. You are acting as a beautiful, what would I say? A beautiful channel for the divine to work through you, for your higher self to work through you you're already connected more so than you think and you are already beautifully moving towards each other ah there's a lot of pinky pinky colors going on here like a lot of reds a lot of pinks very romantic very passionate um we have joy which is coming out again and dolphins really make me think of like childlike joy and also somebody who's very very intelligent which we did pick up about this person too um this could be another spirit animal. So we have dragons, tigers, and dolphins. Wow, you guys have really like badass spirit animals. Any of these animals could be signs that your person is near or that they are thinking of you or that they are sending you love. Um, but let's read the message on this card. Joy is the highest energy of all. It's the magical sense that everything is possible. Joy springs from appreciating the gifts within each moment. <laughs> um, joy allows you to attract and create your present and future moments at their highest possible levels. So if I could give you guys, or if your spirit guides could give you any advice when it comes to bringing this person in, just follow your joy. Like do what makes you happy every day. Um, maybe invest more into your hobbies, um, invest more time into enjoying the art that you enjoy. Um, I think that these are all things that as you naturally pursue will facilitate a meeting with your person. But these are all the messages I'm seeing for you guys. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. I'm sending you lots of love, sending your person lots of love, sending your and their spirit guides lots of love and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number twos. So if you guys chose the selenite and the gummy bear tarot, this is going to be a reading all about your next significant relationship. So just before we get into it, I did want to do a sort of disclaimer that this reading is not going to tell you who you have to end up with or who you inevitably will end up with. Remember that you always have free will and whom you choose to pursue or whom you choose to give your energy to is entirely up to you. What we're going to be looking at in the reading today is someone who is coming into your life, the next person coming into your life or coming back into your life who is energetically aligned with you at the time that you are watching this video and with whom there is a potential for a significant relationship. You are very welcome to watch this reading with a specific person that you already have in mind, but I do also feel called to encourage you guys to just keep an open mind about who might be coming through in today's reading, whether it was it is somebody that you know already or not. 
So that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> One more thing I wanted to mention is that this is like the funniest tarot deck I've ever seen. Like I was literally in tears <laughs> when I was looking through it for the first time. So I was thinking to myself, whoever picks this group, these are the comedians. Like either you are really, really funny or the person you're gonna be in a relationship is really, really funny or both. So let's get right into it. And actually you're gonna have to wait a little bit before we reveal the gummy bears because <laughs> I'm gonna start off with my my little homemade decks and we are just gonna get some traits about this person who is coming in for you this is a deck of physical traits this is a deck of personality traits and you guys actually have a few more cards in this deck than group one because when i finished filming group one i got like more ideas for physical traits to add to this deck so you guys got the expansion pack <laughs> in your reading but let's start off with personality traits of your next partner. So first we have simple. So because this is a personality trait, this would mean somebody who prefers to live a simple life. So this is likely somebody who doesn't have a lot of material possessions, who might have a pretty simple schedule. I would also say someone who is pretty mentally healthy. I just saw someone without excess, so they don't have excessive things to worry about, excessive things to take care of. Um, they don't really care about like societal norms or pressure or what people have to say. They just want to live a simple and peaceful life. I would also say this is somebody who is very easy to understand, so you don't really have to read too deeply or second guess what they're thinking and feeling because they will let you know. Kind of like um, plain and simple energy. I would also say very down to earth, very humble, always honest. Okay, we also have trivia. So the idea that I had with this one is that this person probably knows a lot of random facts that may or may not be useful, but there's a lot of moments like, how do you even know that? Why are you so knowledgeable about that? We also have busy. So this person might be very focused on work. Um, because we have simple here, I don't necessarily get the feeling that they're, they have like a million different things on their plate, but there might be one thing or a few things that they really, really pour all of their effort and energy into. So, they might have a career that they really enjoy and they spend a lot of time on that. Okay, we also have traditional. So when I wrote this card, I was thinking of it in the sense of like dating. This is someone who would take a more traditional approach to dating. So rather than doing, I don't know, like hookups or having these vague situationships, I think this is someone who would like to do the whole process of like getting to know somebody and formally asking them out and formally asking them to go study. This might be someone who wants to like get married, buy a house, have a family someday. And then of course, Traditional could also talk about like valuing the traditions of their family, like certain holidays that they celebrate every year, or even the traditions of like their country and their culture. And then we have homebody. I don't think I need to explain that one too much. So to unwind or to have fun, this person would probably prefer like a nice night in with you, maybe watching movie or playing games or just talking or perhaps cooking together rather than like, you know, a busy party or going out and spending money. <laughs> they would like to just stay in with you. And let's get one more. So the last one that we have is opinionated. So yeah, <laughs> I don't really need to explain that one further either. This would be somebody who has strong opinions about things, maybe doesn't really tend to be on the fence, like they're quite decisive about how they feel. Again, with that simple, I think you really don't have to guess like what is on this person's mind or how they're feeling about something because they will tell you. I'm kind of getting the vibe that they are a very open and direct um, communicator and yeah, they don't really like sit on the fence with many things. I think that they're very clear about where they stand. And this might also be someone who really, um, who really stands for something. Like they're really 
what are they? They have conviction. They have conviction in their values. So I'm going to pull a couple for their physical traits as well. And I think I'm going to take three because group one got three. We have petite, so this will be somebody who is a little bit smaller. I guess you could say smaller than average. Maybe they are a little bit shorter or a little bit more slender, or they're just kind of like small boned or more like more delicate in their stature. We also have tattoo. So this person could have a tattoo or multiple tattoos and then eyes. So there will be something really mesmerizing, really, really beautiful about their eyes that will stand out to you. Um, when you meet this person, probably one of the dead giveaways that this is your person is how intensely you will feel when you look at their eyes, like something about their gaze is very intense for you. It's very captivating. It, it shakes you to your core. So let's move these over here. And now we are going to take, oh, wait, why am I moving this one? <laughs> We're going to take some Zodiac cards to see if we can get some significant Zodiac signs for your person. This could be indicating their literal sign or just indicating more about their overall energy. If you do have a specific person in mind and the signs that appear here um, happen to be the same as them, you can definitely take that as a confirmation. Um, but just because the signs are different, it doesn't mean that it's not that person because again, this can just be talking about their general energy. So we have the first house. There's a little bit of Aries and Mars energy here. And the message is self, physical appearance, early childhood, goals, desires, individuality, temperament, personality, natural tendencies, identity, and self image. So what I'm getting right away from this card is that this is somebody who is very sure of who they are and is not afraid to be who they are. And it's going back to that like simple and opinionated, like I know who I am, I know what I believe in, and nothing can really, nothing can really sway me, nothing can really shake me. I think this is somebody who has like very strong values, very strong morals. They won't be influenced by what society is saying. They won't like fall victim to peer pressure or to guilting of any kind or influencing of any kind. Um, they could have a little bit of stubbornness to them if I'm being honest. So that might be one kind of um, difficult trait of them. But I actually think that in many ways, their stubbornness is a very wonderful thing because it means that they don't give up on what they believe in. It means that they won't give up on you. If you guys are having a tough time, they're like, no, I'm not giving up. We are sitting here. We are working this out. We are going to find our way through it. I think this is somebody who is incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, I am also getting a little bit of like black sheep or unique kind of energy to this person, but more specifically that this was something that was encouraged for them when they were younger. So rather than being ostracized for being different, whether it was like their parents, their teachers, their, their peers, like really admired their uniqueness and what made them different. So I think, you know, that positive enforcement that they receive really helped them to like solidify their identity and to feel good about it. Also with physical appearance, I am thinking that this person is likely very physically attractive and I feel like it's in the conventional way. I know that like what does conventionally attractive really mean anyway, but like <laughs> I think a lot of people would find your person physically attractive, even if they don't care that much about that kind of thing or go over the top to look good. They just naturally look good. And I also think that, you know, when someone has a really nice personality and then it makes them hotter, like it makes them more physically attractive. I think the confidence and, and strength and simplicity and honesty and integrity that this person has, like they're just a good person and it's so easy to see that. And I think that that just radiates outward and makes them very, very attractive to many people. Um, we have this card also talking about goals and desires. So I think that that's what this busy is referring to. I feel like this person has like one significant passion or one significant goal that they're really working towards. Um, 
for many it could be a self-employed venture i'm kind of getting that vibe because aries energy is quite like independent it's the pioneer it's the go-getter um, maybe they have their own business with a business partner or like they're trying to become their own boss in some way um definitely doesn't have to be for everybody but i just got that vibe so i thought that i would um share that but yes i'm kind of getting the feeling that a lot of this person's energy is poured into like one specific um, task one specific goal and then finally with natural tendencies like this is a very no bullshit person it's how it's coming through very simple very natural what you see is what you get they're not they have no interest in like putting on airs or putting on a persona i think that the version of them that you meet for the first time is the version of them that they're always going to be and i think that this person is really like a breath of fresh air with their authenticity and you know it's i honestly don't think that people who have personas or who are fake or deceptive and i talk about this a lot i don't really think it's like a negative or malicious thing it's just so we're afraid right we're afraid of judgment and we want to put our best face forward but like i don't think that this person is afraid of judgment so they just show who they truly are right off the bat so if you guys meet this person and fall in love with them like you don't have to worry about them switching up on you like we talked about before you don't have to worry about them um hiding anything from you or anything like that again what you see is what you get and that's it's such a relief right you don't have to be on your toes or be walking on eggshells like what's gonna happen uh, they're just keeping it real with you all the time um oh also so in group two there was a lot of seventh or sorry <laughs> this is group two in group one there was a lot of um seventh house energy and this made me think that they would have to make the first move towards their person but you guys have first house energy here so that's telling me this person will make a move towards you they will be the one to initiate when you guys first meet like they'll be the one to make the first move or to strike up that conversation with you aries energy is very like I'm bold, I'm daring, I'm gonna go for it. And it makes sense because this person has so much confidence. So I can just see this person like coming up and approaching you and you're like, holy shit, this person is so attractive. And you know, just being captivated by their smoldering gaze. Uh, let's get one more. Let's get one more astrology card. So this person could be an Aries Mars or an Aries rising and of course, sun or moon. And then we have Lilith with Taboo. Ooh. <laughs> so I don't know how Lilith, wor Lilith works, but maybe this person has Lilith in Aries. Like, I don't know how often it changes signs. Um, we have Darkness, Untamed, Intensity, Independence, Erotic, Sexual Liberation, Temptation, Secret Desires, Fetishes, oh my God, <laughs> Shadow Side, Empowerment, and Destruction. Honestly, there's a lot of sexual vibes going on here, so that could definitely be something. Um, I think that there will be a lot of sexual tension between the two of you if you are sexual people when you first meet. Um, I'm looking at this black hole and I'm thinking of like, like getting sucked in and I'm thinking about how powerful their gaze is I wouldn't be surprised like you know <laughs> this is a traditional person in their approach to dating but sometimes the passion just bubbles over my friends so I would not be surprised if like you guys had a physical encounter like even on your first your first time meeting or your first date or very very early on and I could see them being like whoa like i don't normally do this but i'm just like something about you feels different like i just feel so attracted to you or maybe you don't normally do that but the passion is just so strong that you can't help it like who there's a lot of there's a lot of magnetism there's a lot of magnetic energy you will literally feel like you're on fire that there are like sparks flying in your stomach <laughs> when you're with this person um I would say that this person also has like an adventurous side, um, both in the sexual sense and not sexual sense, just in life in general. I think they would like to try new things. They would like to travel to new places. They would like to try new foods. And I think this is somebody who can get along with a lot of different kinds of people as well. Um, and also they could be into the occult. I don't know if I said that already, but I'm just thinking of taboo and things that are hidden. 
Um, and it is making me think of, you know, like the spiritual occult in some way. So maybe they're open to that kind of thing. Um, or they're open to very like out there scientific theories or conspiracy theories. They have kind of takes on things or opinions that other people don't have. Yeah, more and more I'm noticing that this traditional has less to do with their personality <laughs> or like their beliefs and it's more um, like how they get into relationships, how they go about the dating process because when it comes to like what they're willing to explore and what they believe in, I think that they're pretty out there. <laughs> I do think that they are pretty out there. Um, and with this opinionated, they might have some pretty interesting takes <laughs> on like on the world and on the systems in place in the world or like theories about the universe. I think it could be really, really interesting to um, talk to this person and to pick their brain. Now I'm also picking up with Lilith that there might be some people who like honestly are jealous of this person and they might not notice that and might say like, oh, I don't like them. They're so this, they're so that. But the truth is that the truth is that they're just jealous of them. And maybe there's people in your life like that as well. Um, but I'm kind of being shown that, I mean, you can dislike people for whatever reason, but I'm kind of being shown that it's not based on anything really substantial. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that's what I see for Lilith. So there's some kind of, um, kinky energy going on here so I hope you guys are into that um but now I want to take a look at this oracle deck and we're just gonna get um three keywords for your relationship and I'm going to move these a little bit I can't remember I can't remember how I had them in the last one three keywords for your relationship. We have patience, divine timing, maturing, persistence. So there is definitely divine timing at play in your love life. And when it comes to this relationship, coming into union with this person will likely require patience and really teach you patience. It will teach you that good things come to those who wait. Could also be that this person is incredibly patient with you. We have completion, interesting. So this card came out for group one as well. And it gave me this feeling that you're at the end of a major cycle in your life. Maybe you have been patient for a very long time and this period of waiting, this period of patience is coming to an end and your blessings are right around the corner because this card says ending results and rewards. It, it makes me feel like your hard work is paying off, like you're reaping the fruits of your labor and that you're going to see some really amazing blessings coming into your life soon. Um, for one, this relationship is a blessing, but even after coming into union with this person, I think that you guys, like you'll get to see each other at one of the heights of your life, if that makes sense. Like you're gonna see each other in a period where all of your goals are paying off, your abundance is coming in, and you're just gonna be so proud of each other. And I wonder if your person right now is so busy and so tunnel visioned on something because like they've been putting all their efforts into a big goal. And after you get together, you're gonna get to see them reach their goal. Like imagine, I'm really smelling campfire very strongly right now. Um, Maybe you will go camping together or something. I don't know. But what was I saying? You're going to get to see like the look on their face when their dreams come true. You will get to bear witness to each other's dreams coming true. Um, I said it in group one as well, but this card kind of reminds me of the world. Like accomplishments, reaping rewards. You're realizing that being patient and waiting was so worth it. And one last keyword for group two, patience, completion, and lovers. Oh, divine counterpart, chemistry, partnership. So we have some divine counterpart energy coming through here. Um, I'm also thinking of Gemini now because of the lovers. The lovers is associated with Gemini in um, tarot and also Scorpio with Mars. So, so far we have Aries, Scorpio, Gemini energy coming through. Um, and the swans, you can see 
they are reflecting each other in this image. So you might find that you mirror this person very, very strongly. Maybe you find at some points in the reading, it sounds like I'm talking about you, <laughs> which it, it does tend to happen quite a bit. If that's the case, then you and this person are very, very similar. You and this person are mirroring each other. Um, lover's energy and mirroring energy also makes me think of telepathic connection. So you might start to telepathically actually pick up on this person before you meet in the physical picking up on their thoughts, picking up on their feelings, um, or you might start to get this, what's the opposite of impending doom? Impending, <laughs> impending joy. Um, you might start to get this feeling before they come into your life. Like, I can't explain it, but I feel like a big shift is coming because I see that quite a bit as well. I can just tell that things are gonna change soon. Something big is coming. So we are gonna get into your tarot now. I'm so excited to use this deck. I I swear there was tears in my eyes. I hope that you guys will find this as funny as I do, or at the very least that you will find it cute because I think it's it's one of my favorite decks. So, like, look at the face. It's, it's really the facial expression of the bears that get me. All of them have this deadpan face. <laughs> so your first card is the Queen of Cups. And I think I forgot to say, but now we're just taking a look at what your relationship is like. We have, ooh, the lovers. So double lovers energy, double Gemini energy, even more confirmation of divine counterparts and of telepathic connection. And then we have justice and the page of wands, which came out together. So I, I'm going to keep them together. Now we have a little bit of Libra energy going on. And, oh, we have two coming out together again. We have the star and the moon. So, okay, a lot of zodiac signs are joining the party now. <laughs> now we also have Aquarius and Pisces in the house. And then in addition to these, I also have some clarifying, no, not this one. <laughs> I also have some clarifying oracle cards that I'm gonna read with these. So to clarify the queen of cups, we have endless possibilities. To clarify the lovers, we have water spirit manifesting dreams. Otters could be significant spirit animal for you guys. Otters, swans, and maybe bears as well because you guys chose the bear tarot. I'm going to put it like this because these cards are so tiny that the oracle cards hide them. To clarify justice and the page of wands, we have heart home with compassion. What a beautiful card. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's really not enough room for all of these, but that's okay. <laughs> and then to clarify the star and the moon, we have the haunted staircase. Don't let what ifs haunt you. Regrets, unsaid words, missed opportunities. Interesting. So the first vibe that I'm getting from this card is that maybe some of you already know this person and maybe some things ended in a way that you didn't want them to end or you feel like you missed out. Um, or this could just be you guys worrying, like if you're trying to manifest your partner, into your life and you keep worrying like oh maybe i should have gone out to that event because maybe i would have met them there maybe i should have said yes or no or i should have gone this way or that way like you're worried about all the what ifs and like especially if it's been taking a while for them to come into your life i think it's easy to think am i doing something that's delaying this did i miss them and also kind of having fomo or like a fear of missing out you don't want to say no to anything because like what if you what if you meet your person there and this card is saying, don't let these what ifs haunt you. What is meant for you will not pass you by. And I know that that sounds cliche, but it's very, very true. This person is your divine counterpart. Like we see so clearly with the lovers coming out twice. Um, we know that this journey is one that takes a little bit more time. So again, it's easier said than done, but I just hope that if you guys have been waiting that this like the long time that it's taking is not discouraging you because what I really, really see here is that this relationship is meant for you. It's not going to pass you by. You will run into your person or you will run into them again. The star is asking you to keep having hope for your future because the star means that your wildest dreams are coming true. Even the ones that seem so out there, that seem so unrealistic, that seem too good to be true. 
everything your heart ever desires is promised to you with the star and with the moon i see that you guys are doubting yourself a lot especially doubting your intuition and your spiritual insights when it comes to this connection or when it comes to the person that you're manifesting. I often see with the moon somebody who is highly psychic, who is highly tapped in, but they tend to doubt their abilities. And so it's almost as if it's like, it's a shame. I'm not going to say it's a waste, but like, it's a shame because it's like, you have so much confirmation coming to you. You have so many insights coming to you. And it's like, your guides are saying, like they feel so bad, if only you could accept them, if only you could validate them. I see this very often with the moon. So these put together, it's like you are enough, you are ready, you are on the right path and you're being asked to continue having hope. I definitely think that that's what this part of the reading is talking about and your guides are asking you not to stress about decisions in the past, like if things could have turned out differently, would we be together by now? Would I have manifested my person by now? because they're reassuring to you that everything is happening exactly as it is meant to. And once you get to the completion of this cycle, you will understand, like you'll be able to look back and understand why everything, why everything has played out the way that it did. So this is totally here as a reassurance message for you. Normally I would start like over on this end and read them left to right, but I just, I really, really felt like I had to start over here this was the message that was really um that was really jumping out to me the most now if i can interpret these cards in terms of what your relationship is like i definitely think with the star that you guys are amazing encouragers and supporters of each other when you're together you feel like anything is possible you guys might come together at some point for some sort of humanitarian efforts that's kind of the feeling i get with this because this is aquarius energy i often think of the star as a light worker or aquarius aquarian energy as somebody who really has the collective's best interests at heart and wants to serve their community so i think something that you guys are doing together is bringing a lot of light to the world and is helping people who need help and is also instilling hope for the future in others. I was talking about this in group one as well, but I feel like in the collective, we're kind of at a place where the future seems grim um, in terms of the environment, in terms of our health and safety, in terms of social issues. Thinking about the future can be freaking scary. And there's something about what the two of you are doing like your efforts on this earth, your projects on this earth that are making people a little less scared of the future, that are making people a little more happy to be here on this earth. I do think with this divine counterpart energy, and we can even see here on the lovers, like there's an angel or there's a higher being that has brought the two of you together. There's something you'll create that the earth is really, really going to, um, really going to benefit from. And with the moon as well, like this is 12th house energy. This is like drawing inspirations from the ether <laughs> or like pulling, pulling ideas, pulling truths from the soul world. I think that once you come into union with this person, first of all, your telepathy is increasing, but also I think you'll start to get downloads or messages about what the world is going to look like in the future, which is a very a very interesting message. I don't know if I <laughs> if I interpret messages like that a lot, but it's like you will start to be shown in dreams what our world is going to look like in five years, in 10 years, and like what you can do to help the collective. And this, even this card that talks about not having regrets, your guides really want you to focus on the future because it might look like the world is going to shit right now, but you can always change the story. And I think you and your partner are quite instrumental along with other light workers in changing the world, which is really cool. And I'm also getting the feeling with the star and with the dogs here, which are like loyal companions, um, that there are likely many other members to your soul family that you and this counterpart are from. And I do think that you will be uniting with them as well. I think you're gonna have a lovely community, a lovely group of friends, Maybe that campfire I was smelling was like <laughs> you and your friends all like sitting around the fire and enjoying the night sky together. There's even like a night sky on this card. It's so like going out in nature and stargazing together. Um, yes, okay, that's everything I see from here. Sorry that ended kind of abruptly, but <laughs> I'm I'm moving on now. So 
I let's just let's just keep going this way. Maybe like this person speaks a language or reads a language that is like right to left instead of left to right or something like that. Um, or maybe your spirit guides do actually. It happens like this sometimes, so I'm just gonna go with it. So <laughs> moving on here, we have justice and the page of wands and we have heart home with compassion. And I think that this is speaking about a happy home life. Again, you totally have free will, but if you do pursue things further with this person, if you like what you're hearing, which I think you do because you've made it this far into the reading, um, I think that there's definitely potential to live with this person and to have a very, very happy home. This is what I'm totally seeing with this card. Um, with justice, I think that your home life will be very, very fair. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining like, you know how if, if two people are fighting or they're like at odds, they don't see eye to eye, there would be like a mediator to help them talk things through. I'm kind of seeing, it's like, you guys have the emotional intelligence and you have the communication skills to like mediate yourself. I'm not saying like if you if you ever feel like seeking help from somebody or counseling somebody, of course do that. Like I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but it's like you have so much compassion for each other. And I think both of you are quite um, level headed. We've seen that this person is very honest and they have a lot of integrity. So this is someone who's like very consistent. You know, they don't have um, double standards. They they don't have like hypocrisy. They don't flip flop. Like they're really, I don't know if set in their ways is the right word, but it's like they're consistent. <laughs> they're consistent and they're reliable. And I think it's very easy to talk things through with both of you, I think you guys are both excellent communicators, but you're very, very good at finding compromises. You're very, very good at hearing each other out, at validating each other's issues. So like, if your partner is concerned about something, even if it's not a huge deal to you, you will give it weight as if it is, because it's like, you are a part of me, because we're a couple, we're a unit, and I'm taking on some of you as part of me, so what's important to you is important to me. and what makes you upset makes me upset. What makes you happy makes me happy. You become one in a way like this. So their best interests are yours and vice versa. And so whenever any issues arise, like you talk it through and you're on the same team, you're moving together. And like I said, you're very, very good at finding solutions to problems that makes everybody happy. Nobody feels like they're getting the short end of the stick and you both agree. Like, yes, this is fair. It's not like, a, okay, you win this time or you're right this time. It's like, no, we're gonna, like, it's that stubbornness. We're gonna sit here and we're gonna talk through this until we find something to make both people happy. And there's, there's no, there's, I don't feel any like animosity at all. It just feels very, very peaceful. Like you're able to emotionally detach yourself and separate your ego from the situation and just talk through any problems that you have. So it's like, yes, there might be some conflict in your relationship, like there is with any human relationship, but the way that you deal with it is so mature and so loving and so like emotionally intelligent. This is the the justice energy that I feel here. So you're able to really maintain like a domestic harmony. Now, again, you don't necessarily have to end up living with this person and this can obviously apply even if you don't live together. Um, but I think you'd be very harmonious living together because you'd be able to solve any like domestic issues that come up. Um, you'll be able to like manage your finances very well, for example, and like manage the chores very well, like who does what. It just feels like you're in like a really good balance in that sense and and very, very good at compromising. We also do have the page of wands here. So again, I have to do the spiel, like free will, it's up to you. It's it's up to you to claim this if it resonates, but pages do make me think of children. So if you do want children in your future, I do see that you could have a happy home with children. And then again, this justice energy that would extend to your child, like being very fair to your child, hearing them out about their desires and their concerns. And with this balance, I think that you both would have like an equal equal influence on them. You would both put in equal effort parenting. And I do think that you guys are very, very similar. 
but I think that any differences you have would really balance out your child and make them like a very well-rounded person. Um, if you do not want children or can't see yourself having children, or if you would just like another interpretation because you're not sure, this can also talk about like a playful and adventurous energy. The Page of Wands is very optimistic. Um, so if you do choose to spend a long-term future with this person and, you know, have a home with them, um, I do think that you guys would enjoy a lot of new experiences together. I think, yeah, we did have the home body card here. So I do think that you guys will have a lot of fun at home together. But I also did get a little travel bug energy. Didn't I from this Lilith card? Was it from the Lilith card? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, there was that spontaneous kind of energy where this person does like to try new things. And like, it makes sense to have both in your personality. I'm very adventurous. I love traveling, but I also really freaking like staying at home and doing nothing. So like with this justice, I think you guys just have a really, really good balance of like having quiet nights together and then having more wild nights together, staying in, going out. But what I can say is whatever you guys do end up doing together, you will have so much fun. And I think that you guys will really take an interest in each other's interests. So like you, you guys might be interested in different things at the time that you meet, but then you start to share with each other. And now because you're so similar, it's like you take a liking to what they like and vice versa. And now you both have twice as many interests as before, or like twice as many passions as before. Um, so all around, I just see a very fun and fulfilling and loving home life or life together in general for you guys. So moving on here, I totally think like this half of the spread is really talking about your spiritual and psychic connection because we have the lovers, which again, we spoke about like divine guidance, telepathy, we have water, spirit, queen of cups, and then the endless possibility is associated with the third eye chakra. So there's a lot of psychic and spiritual energy going on here. And I do think that your person is into that in some way or is open to that in some way. I think you're gonna have a lot of deep spiritual discussions. I think they're gonna have a lot of interesting takes on spirituality and maybe like how the universe is mapped out or the meaning of this lifetime for you guys. Um, yeah, talking to this person is gonna be really eye-opening and really cool and also really validating. I think that at many times, this person could put into words what you've always felt or what you've always known to be true, but you you just like didn't know how to put it into words. I feel like I have this a lot where I can kind of feel a spiritual truth within me, but I don't really know how to apply it in the 3D or I don't really know how to convey it to somebody. And I think there could be moments where where this person just says so clearly, like that's the truth that I've been feeling for so long, you just put it into words so perfectly. I can feel a lot of like revelations or a lot of moments of awakening that happen when you are with this person, when you're in your loving home and when you're just having a conversation, um, a lot of really amazing realizations coming to you. Um, with the lovers, there's just this feeling I'm getting that your peers and the people in your circle love you guys so much. Like they love you so much as individuals. They love you so much as a couple. I think a lot of people really feel like it makes sense for you guys to be together. And I think you're an amazing example of like what a happy and healthy couple is. A lot of people around you might consciously or unconsciously kind of like model their relationship around yours because you're like a template for a healthy relationship. That's what I'm getting with the with the lover's card. And then we have the water spirit with manifesting dreams. Otters are very snuggly, I feel. I don't know if that's just my image of them or if they actually are snuggly, but this could be a very snuggly person, um, a very like affectionate person. I'm kind of getting this like funny image where they can go from being a super, you know, they could go from being a big old freak <laughs> and like being quite, kinky and then suddenly being like really really snuggly and cute it's like they have both in them and they could switch very quickly and i'm just realizing like gemini energy is like that as well quite adaptable 
and can switch, you know, quickly in their demeanor. Um, okay, finally, let's talk about the water spirit with manifesting dreams. Um, we spoke about you guys getting to see each other go through some major accomplishments, accomplishments, accomplishments. Um, with this person being into the occult and being into spirituality, I do think that they will be familiar with and maybe even practice the act of manifesting. And one thing that might be really fun for you guys to do is like, have like make a vision board together or like do scripting together or talk about your dreams together the lovers and gemini energy is all about communication and there's something about your energy when you guys come together like if you and this person were to come together and have a heart to heart about like your desires your wishes and dreams for the future it's almost as if through having that conversation you're literally speaking it into existence like when you speak the words to each other, it just holds some kind of special power. And maybe that's because of the angel who is watching over you guys when you're together. But I swear, like the conversations that you have with this person, they will come true. And just in general, be careful of the words you speak. Like from right now, from today, when you're watching this reading, really pay attention to the words that you speak because what you speak is going to become your reality. So finally we have the queen of cups and we have endless possibilities i think i said this earlier when we were looking at the star but you really do give each other this hope for the future and this feeling that anything is possible like i mentioned before this card is associated with the third eye i feel a burp coming up <laughs> sorry um it's associated with the third eye and we even have the number 38 on here which adds up to 11 so repeating ones 1111 11, 111 this might be um, significant numbers for you guys, but this is a number that I associate with manifestation as well as new beginnings, new potential, dreams coming true. And with this third eye and with this queen of cups energy as well, it's like you guys are seeing past the veil. You're seeing past the illusion because the life that you've lived up until now and what you've decided that is possible for you or impossible for you, especially if it's just based on the past, like it's always been this way for me, so this is how it's gonna be, or the world has always worked this way, so this is how it's gonna be. When you see past the veil, you see the truth, which is that you are the creator. And at any moment you can change and create the reality that you want. You're no longer just a spectator or a passive recipient of the life that is handed to you, but when you open your third eye, you remember that this is all your creation and this is all a reflection like the swans. This is all a reflection of your inner world. And there's just something about the vibe, something about the energy when you guys are together. I think that really reminds you of this and makes you feel very powerful and makes you feel like you can truly do anything and you can truly create anything. And with the Queen of Cups here, I see you guys, again, I know I already said this, but you guys are just amazing supporters of each other, um, especially emotional supporters. When it comes to what you're feeling on your vast spectrum of emotions, nothing is off the table. Whether you are over the moon ecstatic, whether you are devastated, super upset, even those emotions or mindsets that some of us maybe don't like to admit that we're in, like if you're feeling petty, if you're feeling jealous, if you're feeling pessimistic, if you're feeling judgmental, like none of that is off the table. You can discuss any of your emotions with this person and they will always have the same compassion for you. They, they will always see you as so sweet, as so lovable, as so adorable, because they love you and embrace you for every aspect of your humanness, of your humanity. Um, Queen of Cups is also making me feel snuggly too, <laughs> because she does have that like nurturing and loving energy to her. So I think you will get a lot of snuggles from this person. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, we did talk about otters, bears, and swans. We also have dogs here. And then there's like little fish here. I, this is maybe a lobster, but there's like a lobster here and a fish. So <laughs> maybe like fish are a significant spirit animal for you guys as well. Um, oh, and for dogs, there is a year of the dog. So 
This will definitely not be for every single person watching, but it can be a confirmation if you have somebody in mind and they fall under this year or if you fall under this year. So the year of the dog is 1994, 1982, 1970, and then basically you just keep going back 12 years. I hope that I did that right. Um, but okay, so we are moving on to the next part of the reading now. And I'm going to see now if there are any significant places or time frames that you guys should know about when it comes to this relationship. So we have two. And we have first quarter. Okay, and then I'm not sure yet if this part is talking about... We have stellium. And we have sun. Okay, um, I think that, yes, this is talking about a significant place. I'm just gonna get one more here. And we have first house. Ooh, first house again. That's so funny. So group one got um, seventh house twice in their reading and you guys got first house twice in your reading. So. Yeah, definitely this person is going to come find you. This person is going to come approach you. As for the circumstances of your meeting, um, basically the energy that I'm getting from this is you do not have to purposely or like actively do anything different to meet this person. I could kind of feel you guys in an energy earlier of like feeling like you need to say yes to things or feeling like you need to go to certain places like, oh, I need to go do this so that I can meet them, so that I can line up with them. And I feel with this energy that meeting this person is going to feel natural. Now, I do think that you will meet this person when you're trying something new, but it's going to be something that you, like, you wanted to do anyway, if you know what I mean. You don't have to be so conscious about, oh, there's this new thing that's presenting itself to me and... You know, I did hear that I was going to meet my person when I try something new, so maybe I should go try this. It's not like that. It's something that comes naturally to you. I hope that I'm explaining, you know, adequately, but it's something that you would want to do anyway. So you don't have to like force yourself to do it or do it just because it's going to lead to this person. It will just come to you. Um, for many of you guys, I think that you already know what this new thing is. It's already coming up on the horizon. For example, like you're starting a new job soon, you're starting school soon, you're moving soon, you're starting a new hobby soon, or maybe some of you have just started it recently. If you look back, maybe it's like the past two months with the number two here. If you look back the past couple months and think of something that you have started to do differently, a new place you've started to go, a new hobby you've started to take on, a new person you've started to hang out with who could be like a mutual person, um, Anything new that you've implemented, the first quarter says to keep going with that because the first quarter, it talks about the existing energy growing, the existing energy gaining momentum. And so anything new that you've started, keep going because it's probably that <laughs> that is going to lead you to this person or anything new that you've already, that's already like in your timeline that's coming up soon. That's probably what is going to lead you to this person. And again, they are going to come and introduce themselves to you and make the first move to you. When I looked at this two card, I thought about two people's worlds coming together. So it's like your worlds are your worlds are colliding in some way as you are naturally doing what you like to do and they're naturally doing what they're like what they like to do. Your worlds are going to mesh like this. So here we have um important time frames that you guys could know about. Maybe the stellium one is more for those of you who are like familiar with astrology, but, and honestly, I'm not that familiar with it. Like I'm not that familiar with the astrological transits, but if any of you guys who are knowledgeable on astrology do know of a time where there is going to be a bunch of planets in the same part of the sky, then that could be a time that you guys are going to meet. Or if you have a stellium in your birth chart, which just means like you have a bunch of planets like really, really close together, like in the same sign, in the same house. If you have a stellium in your birth chart, then you might come together with this person um, when the sun is in that stellium. So 
let's just say for example you have um, a Gemini stellium in your birth chart then you might meet this person when the Sun is in Gemini so like when the Sun is in your natal stellium I hope that that's not too confusing um, for others of you if you know your birth time then you could meet this person when the Sun is in your ascendant sign so for my for my ascendant sign is Taurus so if this was my reading I would meet them in Taurus season there's a lot of like <laughs> there's a lot of like you need to know astrology to get this time frame um, what could I say for those of you who have no like no knowledge of astrology at all maybe when the Sun is in your sign so like if you are in Aries then it's in Aries season like in your birthday month but wow okay <laughs> so to finish off the reading we are going to take a look at these oracle cards these are just going to be any additional messages or guidance from your spirit guides with regards to this connection so first i love this deck so much love makes the difference love helps heal past hurts and provides a sense of security and self-worth so there will definitely be some healing of past relations relationships <laughs> going on in this relationship there will be a lot of aspects of this relationship that are very healthy and that maybe you guys didn't get to experience in past relationships especially what's really standing out to me is the amazing communication that you guys have and the amazing compassion that you have for each other um and how easy and even enjoyable it is to work out your differences resolving conflict and working out your differences might have been something that was horrific is the word that's coming to my mind or even traumatic in your past relationships like it blew up into things it, it never should have become or you know there was like some attacking going on some kind of toxicity going on like that where you didn't feel validated where you didn't feel safe to speak up if something was bothering you um, but when you bring love into the equation that makes all of the difference like you're feeling love in ways that you've never felt before you haven't felt in a long time we have sapphire with easy does it your health happiness and abundance require a gentle approach to life and work so like the queen of cups was talking about i think you guys are very nurturing towards each other um, because this person is so busy and kind of has tunnel vision maybe you will need to help this person um, and remind them to take it easy remind them to slow down or maybe you need that advice as well um I also think that this is a piece of advice from your spirit guides to you. I just, and I know I've said this a few times, but I just keep feeling this energy of this group really like going out of their way to find this person or stressing or rushing to find this person, feeling like, what do I need to do? I need to do this. I need to do that. And I think the guides are saying like to just relax and live your life naturally and, and take it easy. And this relationship will flow to you naturally and then finally we have cleanse and detoxify with great love and respect we ask you to detoxify your precious and sensitive body at your request will help you to develop life-affirming ways to deal with stress as well as ease any sorrow at shedding your old ways give your cares worry and concerns to us and feel the beautiful grace of your newly purified body the first thing that is coming to me is maybe some of you guys are still consciously or unconsciously holding on to past hurts healing onto wounds from past relationships and you need to purge these from your body like you need to have a good crying session or screaming session or you need to get out these emotions that are lodged inside your body in some way and create space for this beautiful love to come in um, I also think that this could be talking about like decluttering your schedule like I said earlier, if you haven't already, I think that there is some new beginning coming in your life and this might lead you to become a little bit more busy such that you just can't do all of the things that you once were before. And I think it's interesting. We had that simple card come out at the very beginning. I think that the best way to attract this person in this relationship is to just live simply, to live in a way that comes naturally to you. Again, I don't see you having to purposely do anything or go out of your way to attract this person. Like you don't have to do manifestation rituals or write things down a certain number of times. If you are doing that and that makes you feel good, obviously keep doing it. 
but that is not like the condition. That is not the condition of manifesting this person. You don't have to come up with like a game plan of what you're gonna do to manifest them. They're really showing me like just live your life naturally. Live, live like you would if you already had this love in your life. Not like you are looking for it, but that you're just living in the way that you like to live. And this is how you can simplify things. And remember with all of this, yeah, first house, first house energy, they will be coming to you. They will be coming into your life. Um, yes, but this is all the messages I'm seeing for you guys. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. I'm sending you guys lots of love, sending your person lots of love, and sending your and their guides lots of love, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye! Hi number threes, so if you guys chose the Fuchsite and the Tarot of the Divine, this is going to be a reading all about your next significant relationship. So just before we get into it, I do want to give a sort of disclaimer that this reading is not going to tell you who you have to be with or who you inevitably will end up with. Remember that you always have free will and whom you choose to pursue and give your energy to is entirely up to you. What we will be taking a look at in this reading is who is entering or re-entering your life next, with whom you are energetically aligned at the time of watching this video, and with whom you have a potential of having a significant relationship. You are very welcome to watch this reading with a specific person that you already have in mind. However, today I do also feel called to encourage you guys to just keep an open mind about who wants to come through today, whether that is somebody you know already or not. And for this group specifically, I do have to say that the energy has felt a little bit frazzled or a little bit confusing and I was sitting with it for a while trying to figure out why it felt this way and I think that for this group there might be more than one person who is wanting to come through so maybe you guys are like you have two people of interest or there's two people who want to come into your life it, it felt like there was more than one energy or more than one presence if you guys did feel drawn to a different group other than group three you may want to consider watching both because in terms of your potential next partner, it seems like you definitely have some options. So, okay, let's get into the reading now. I'm actually going to put this aside for a moment and we're going to use these homemade decks. So this one is a deck of physical traits. This one is a deck of personality traits. So we're just going to see what information we can get about this person. I'm also going to be using a zodiac deck so that we can see any um, significant zodiac signs or just get more insight into their personality. But let's start off with this blue one. So personality traits of your next partner. We have facade. So this might be somebody who who they are when you first meet them and who they are once you get to know them is quite different. Could also be somebody who is a little bit hard to read at first. Maybe they are a little bit guarded. And this is likely due to just nerves, just nerves of being around people. I don't really get the feeling that this person is intentionally fake or misleading. So for example, this could be somebody who comes across as kind of shy or quiet when you first meet them, but then once you get to know them, they are very loud and funny and talkative. Or it could be someone who comes across as quite serious and stoic, but then after you get to know them, they are very sensitive and soft. So it's kind of like they have a protective outer layer and you might not really get to see their true self when you first meet. Hmm. <laughs> and it's interesting too how these personality traits are taking so long to come out. It's almost like this person reveals reveals themselves to you slowly. Like you really need to take the time to get to know this person. We have trivia. This is kind of funny because it came out for group two as well, but 
the thought that I had with this card is that this is somebody who is very knowledgeable about many different things, but they're also very knowledgeable on some things that you're like, why would you even know that? <laughs> Where did you learn that? Like seemingly random or seemingly useless trivia. I think this person has an excellent memory and they're just like a sponge when it comes to facts. And look at this. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a very sensitive, soft, and squishy person. So with this facade, I think they probably... It's like this person has a cerebral, intellectual, stoic side to them, and then they also have the soft and squishy side to them. But when they are meeting somebody or just getting to know somebody early on, I think they really push out like the intellectual and stoic side, and they really hide the soft and squishy side. But over time, like they slowly melt, they slowly open up. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Um, we have confidence. I think that when you're around this person, no, wait, when this person is around you, <laughs> when this person is around you, they feel confident, they feel like they can be their true selves. I think that you're going to be one of the few people that this person really opens up to. I'm also getting the vibe that this person is incredibly talented, um, but they don't really show their talent to many people. And I also think that what they selectively choose to put out to the front and hide in the back probably has a lot to do with how they were raised and what talents and traits were deemed like useful or were deemed worthy of praise. So for example, maybe this person's talent is like they're really good at poetry or they're really good at art or something like that. But in the environment they grew up in, that kind of stuff was not seen as like useful. That kind of stuff was not encouraged. It was more encouraged to get good grades. It was more encouraged to make money. It was more encouraged to be at the top of your class. Like these kinds of more intellectual or professional things rather than, you know, the artistic side of things, the creative side of things, the emotional side of things. Um, that has kind of determine what they feel is acceptable to show outward and what they kind of have to hide away. But I think that you're going to get to see the true self of this person, which is very, very talented, very creative, very imaginative, very sensitive. They have a ton of empathy as well. Also with confident, this is totally not what I had in mind when I wrote this, but I'm thinking of confidant or like um, when you tell someone something in confidence, I think that this is a person that like they will take your secrets to the grave. <laughs> they will never betray you. They will never lie to you. This person is very, very reliable. So I'm already feeling like they feel an immense sense of security around you. There's something about you that makes them feel very safe. And I think they'll make you feel very safe as well. I'm also kind of getting the vibe that when you do come together with this person, they will still be in the process of figuring out who they really are. They will still be in the process of self-discovery. For some of you, this person or both of you could even be going through a dark night of the soul when you come together and just kind of questioning everything, questioning the life that you've lived up until now and like why you made the choices you did. Was that really genuine? Was that really in alignment? Or is this who I really am? And obviously this can be a very tough and uncomfortable time, but I also think it's really beautiful how you're going to be able to watch each other discover yourselves and to watch each other come out of your cocoon. I think you're both going to see amazing transformations in each other and one of the reasons this is coming through is because this deck is behaving very messily like a lot more so than the other groups and it just gave me this feeling of being confused about being confused about who you really are and kind of going through some healing there like this is this deck is very hard to shuffle so maybe you know how I felt that there's like two energies coming through it could definitely be that there is more than one person, but now that I sit more with this energy, it could be that like who this person is when you meet them and who they are 
like once you get to know them over time, it's like a total 180. And I mean that in the best way, like they're going through such an amazing glow up. They're going through such an amazing transformation. And I think maybe one of the reasons they feel so safe with you is because you could see that butterfly that was trying to come out of the cocoon like right from the start and you didn't judge them for their uncomfortable transformation process you knew like this is a work in progress this is a masterpiece in progress like i see the real you i see what you're becoming and you just embrace them you embrace them for that in between you embrace them even in their uncertainty i think yeah i think you guys are going to play a really big role in helping each other through your dark nights of the soul and helping each other through your transformations. <laughs> and now we have new person. So when I wrote this card, when I wrote this card, I was thinking of it as like, this is a new person you haven't met yet. Could very well have this meaning, but it's taking on a whole different meaning <laughs> in the context of this reading. Like I'm becoming a new person. I'm shedding my old skin. I'm transforming. Some of you may very well already know this person. And this reading is showing you or indicating that they're going to be going through a huge change. And then we also have observant. So this person will be very sensitive and observant together is giving me kind of empath energy. Like someone who can very well, no, very skillfully pick up on the delicate, pick up on the subtle energies around them, very observant to how others are feeling and very observant to what other people need from them. This is definitely an incredibly thoughtful and caring person. And they will notice like the smallest changes in your demeanor, the smallest changes in your appearance. Like, oh, you cut your hair one inch. <laughs> it looks good. They'll notice all of those, all of those little things. Oh, you changed your eyeliner. Okay, so let's get a few physical traits now as well. We have eyes. So there will be something about this person's eyes that are absolutely mesmerizing to you, absolutely beautiful to you. Um, you might be able to, and it sounds very cheesy, but like <laughs> see into their soul through their eyes. I just saw 1111 on the camera timer, by the way. Um, also, you guys could have very, very similar eyes, which could be kind of spooky you know, like the patterns in them or the shades in them are like exactly the same or the shape is exactly the same. There could also be something about your initial eye contact that is really um, impactful to you. And again, it's cheesy, but <laughs> like I looked into your eyes and I was a changed person. We also have body. So what I was thinking with this card is just that this person has a really, really nice body. Obviously that is subjective. So it will be like up to you guys if you have an ideal body type, but you definitely don't have to, like I don't really have one. <laughs> and oh, okay, so you guys got four. We have mid-length hair. Again, this is pretty subjective and it will likely depend on like the gender of this person, like what is considered mid-length hair for those who identify as women or men can be quite different. So yeah, a lot of this is subjective. And then we have slender. Okay, so I'm just gonna put these to the side here because we have a lot of cards to use today and this this table is going to get very very busy but just before we get into the tarot i'm going to pull a couple of zodiac cards this could show us zodiac signs that are dominant in your person's chart or just the general energy of their personality but again, if you do have someone specific in mind and their zodiac signs come out, that could definitely be a confirmation. This is a really, really amazing deck, by the way. All of the decks are listed in the description, but I just got this one recently and I love it. Okay. Okay, so we have Libra coming through, the mediator, fair, people pleaser, balanced, sociable, sensible, diplomatic, polished, easygoing, fickle, indecisive, harmonious, self-indulgence, ruler of seventh house. So this person could definitely have a Libra sun, but what I'm seeing more so is a Libra moon or 
they have Libra in the fourth house, which would make them a Cancer rising, I believe. Um, yeah, for most people, I'm not getting huge Libra Sun vibes. They could be a Libra Mars as well. Um, but yes, I'm getting the sense that, first of all, we spoke about how kind and empathetic or empathic this person is. One thing that might be a little bit of a weakness or a difficulty with them is people pleasing and maybe kind of a fear of confrontation. I can see that this person is a little bit wary of showing their true desires or wary of asserting themselves. Um, I could also see how as they go through their transformation, this is something that will become more and more easy for them because we do have confidence here. We did have all of those messages about them really coming out of their shell and shedding their old skin. Um, so I think Libra energy is like a big lesson for them in this lifetime, like learning how to be compassionate, learning how to consider others, learning how to maintain the peace without stifling your own desires, without stifling your own concerns and your own best interests. Like Libra is all about balance. And I think that finding that balance for them is going to be a really big lesson in this lifetime and I think they're gonna learn this lesson amazingly. I think that once they come out of their shell more they will be like this beautiful social butterfly, they will be so kind and graceful and so well liked but not at the expense of being too selfless, not at the expense of stifling themselves. Okay, um, that's a lot. <laughs> Man, the decks are just behaving so crazy in this group. I don't know if this is your energy or their energy or both of you, but I'm just getting the feeling that you guys are going through a confusing time and kind of a tough time. And we also have Saturn. So it could be Saturn in Libra as well. That definitely won't resonate for everybody watching this video because that's like a very specific age group. I think the Saturn in Libra generation is around 40 years old or something like that. Um, but we have discipline, structure, responsibility, Saturday, Capricorn. So it could have Capricorn in their chart as well. Restriction, obstacles, trials, hard work, self-discipline, integrity, and patience. I'm like my heart really like my heart hurts for this person they're such a nice person um i definitely think that this shell that they're trying to break through right now does come from childhood and does come from a relationship with their parents because Saturn is related to, like it says on this card, discipline, but more specifically the father, but we could extend this to just parents in general. So I definitely think that they, they likely had parents who were quite conditional when it came to giving love and affection. Like there were certain behaviors or certain accomplishments that they really, really praised and others that they really, really like dismissed or even condemned and this really shaped what this person feels comfortable putting out and what they feel comfortable hiding away and i think what you're doing in this relationship or like what both of you are doing for each other is saying hey like this part of you that you've hidden away it's not bad this part of you that you've hidden away is lovable and i can just i can see in your eyes that your soul is craving to let this part back out because your soul wants to express the full spectrum of of who they really are and you deserve to feel that liberation you deserve to feel that release that fulfillment of letting all of your colors shine through so let's work through this together let's unlearn that these things that you're hiding are bad and let's, let's get you out of that shell so you can enjoy the world and you can enjoy connections in your life without being afraid of people judging you as harshly as you're judging yourself. This is really powerful and this is really touching as well. So this is what I see for the initial energy check. So we are gonna, wait, no, I lied. We are gonna take, <laughs> We're going to take three cards from this deck and get three keywords for your relationship with this person. Three 
three keywords for your relationship. Now I see the deck is shuffling much neater. We have pleasure, enjoyment, sensuality, physicality. I think that one thing you guys are both learning from this relationship is that life is meant to be enjoyable. Life is meant to be pleasurable. Life is not just a series of tasks to complete, a series of goals to reach, a series of expectations to be met. I think that this relationship is a huge ingredient in helping you guys go from surviving to really living, to really thriving and living for yourself, not just to tick the boxes of other people, not just to be graded and evaluated and deemed acceptable or unacceptable. It's this feeling of like, I'm not here for you. I don't owe you anything. I'm here for me. I'm here to enjoy my life. And you guys are definitely bringing immense pleasure back into each other's lives this can talk about like the pleasure of self-expression of leisure travel recreation your physical relationship we also have manifestation magic believe and faith i love that there's a unicorn on this um on this card because unicorns make me think of embracing your uniqueness, embracing your weirdness, embracing what makes you special. Um, this is totally the pleasure of self-expression and the manifestation is making me think of the magician, which is like, I'm the boss of my life. I'm the creator of my life. I can have whatever experience I want and you don't get to label me or label my experience anymore. And then we also have joy, play, celebration, fun, lightness. You guys are learning not to take life so seriously and really learning that this life is, this life is whatever you make it. I also feel called to say, both of these images look quite similar. If you guys ever see, you know how sometimes you see balloons floating in the sky, like somebody let go of a balloon and it's flying away, or even if you see a hot air balloon in the sky, this could be this person's higher self trying to communicate with you, letting you know that they're there, that they're thinking about you, that they love you, but oh my gosh, I feel so emotional just looking at how much fun like, I actually feel like crying when I think of how much fun you guys will have together, which is kind of weird, but I think it's long overdue for you guys to let loose and to not be constantly, like, looking over your shoulder or filtering your actions because you're afraid of someone, like, coming down on you. Um, like, shit, this is your life. This is your world. You, you deserve, it's your divine right to enjoy this life and not constantly have to answer to people. Okay, so let's get into your tarot now. And we're just gonna get more information about what your relationship will be like. Okay, so first we have the page of coins or the page of pentacles. We have the lovers, so there's some Gemini energy coming through as well. I think so far it's Libra, Capricorn, and Gemini. Ooh! I was also reminded of the Magician earlier, so I'm going to throw in Aries and Virgo. We also have the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Cups. Ooh, that looks very pleasurable. Okay, so in addition to these tarot cards, we are also going to look at some clarifying oracle cards. So to clarify the Page of Coins, we have a Tall Tale. To clarify the lovers, we have toadstools with growth and we have the number 44 on this one. So that could be a significant number for you guys as well. In addition to the balloons, which we previously saw, um, this person's higher self could also use angel numbers to communicate with you, especially repeating fours. To clarify the Nine of Swords, we have Sky Bridge with possibility for union. I also do wanna point out that 47 reduces to 11. And repeating ones and repeating fours together for me, it's totally like angelic. Angels are communicating with you. Angels are helping you with this union. And then 
for nine of cups to clarify the nine of cups we have treehouse find peace in being alone solitude introspection independence so i'm and i feel like reading these right to left as well like usually i go this way but in group two i did them right to left and for you guys i also feel called to do it um right to left um okay so yes i'm gonna start with this the nine of cups and treehouse i think that this is speaking of a honeymoon phase that you guys are going to have together and also like again i feel like crying because what i've been calling a dark night of the soul this whole time it's not even gonna feel sad or scary like when you hear dark night of the soul you think of being like alone you think of being terrified being uncertain being isolated and it's like you guys are going through this together. There's almost this feeling of you guys like, this is a really weird example, but it's like, imagine there is some kind of apocalypse going on in the world, but you guys have your own snuggly bunker <laughs> that you're staying in together. And because you have each other, it's not so scary. It's this feeling of like, we're cooped up together and we're going through this tough time together. And because we have each other, we're not sad, we're not freaking out. Um, I just see you guys going through your dark night together and really talking everything out, like hugging, hugging it out together, like crying if you need to, releasing emotion if you need to. But it, it all feels so healing. It all feels so renewing. It all feels so welcome. Like you're really, really in it together. I think it's so interesting that in the Nine of Cups in this deck, we have this couple that is just like sitting together and lounging together and it's so weird to say you like you enjoyed your dark night of the soul but <laughs> I think that there's a lot of joy and pleasure that is going to come from it there's a lot that is going to be released and I also think that you guys are going to enjoy I don't know if you're necessarily homebodies but you are going to like the best times that you have when you look back were the times that you were just like together and alone and relaxing at home and having deep conversations. You might have some amazing adventures together. You might go out to parties. You might go out and travel and have all of these wild experiences. But when you look back at the moments that really really played on your heartstrings that are really memorable it's like that conversation we had <laughs> when we were sitting on the couch and i was telling you about my childhood and then i was crying and then we hugged for like 10 minutes it like that was such a nice memory that was so healing that was so liberating for me it's like the moments that you just make together in your little coop <laughs> in your treehouse in your sanctuary in your bunker I hope that I'm uh, explaining this well. It's like the time that you share alone and the time that you just share your heart, share your emotions and heal together. Those are the most, those are the most beautiful moments. Um, yes, so let's move on to the Nine of Swords and the Sky Bridge with possibility for union. So the Nine of Swords is a card that talks about worries, overthinking, anxiety, feeling stuck. Some of you guys might be really worrying about how this union is going to come about. Whether you know this person in the 3D yet or not, whether you are in contact or not, I'm just sensing this general worry. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the reading, there is a kind of frazzled or flustered or confused or worrisome kind of energy in this group. And we have spoken about angels being present in this reading. We have the number 11 here. We have the number 44 here. I want to tell you that you guys are so closely protected. This union as well is so closely protected. And I feel like the sky bridge is saying, you're worried about how this is all going to come together, but you don't need to know because we're on it. We've got you. We've got this. We can build bridges where you can't. We can see where bridges need to be built where you can't. It's like your angels are coming through and saying, we have this magic that we could literally 
create a bridge in the sky for you so that you guys can get together. We can orchestrate things in such an amazing way that you as a human just can't. And I think the more you believe in this amazing power of your angels and the more you believe in this confirmation they're giving you that yes, union is possible. Yes, union is coming to you. I think the more you can have faith in that, the more you will be able to relax because I am feeling quite a bit of an overactive mind in this group, feeling like you need to figure out how this is all going to come together and your angels want to release you from that burden. You don't have to figure this out. And like, it's so easy for me to say, like, just stop thinking about it. It will be okay. So I, I also want to give my acknowledgement that this is no easy feat, but if there's any affirmations that you guys could repeat to yourself, if there's anything that your angels want you to really repeat and really get into your subconscious is that your angels are so powerful. They are much bigger than you. They have a bigger perspective. And like I said, they can build bridges where you can't. They can see potential where you can't. They have a bird's eye view. So they see where you are. They see where your person is. They know what to do. And from your tiny little perspective, it's not fair to expect yourself to figure all of that out. So I think they're asking you to release this to them. If you guys have been wondering, like, should I be taking action right now? Should I be trying to figure things out right now? Or should I just let go? I think that with these cards, the answer is really to let go because this is this task is bigger than just what one human could do or what one human could perceive of. I think they really want you to release this into their hands and trust them with this union because they are in the process of building a bridge for you. And I love how this looks like, it looks like a light at the end of a tunnel, like you're ascending into the light. And even the number 11, it's like a new beginning is coming. Your manifestation is coming. Your joy is coming. They just want you to trust in that and also like not to feel the pressure yourself, like to let it go and and trust that they are working on it for you, that they're orchestrating it for you. So next we have the lovers and toadstools with growth. And I'm just noticing something really cool <laughs> that I didn't notice before. There is another, wait, which deck is it in? Oh, it might actually be in this one. <laughs> there's there's a card in this one called Galactic Mushroom, I think. <laughs> and toadstools are very similar to mushrooms, so I'm getting kind of a similar vibe to it. But the cool thing about mushrooms is that, or according to the guidebook, they have a very intricate network underground. It's like all of the mushrooms are one entity and they're communicating with each other. I think it's similar to how trees have this network of roots and trees can communicate with each other, but it's all happening behind the scenes, right? Like we can't see this network. To us, it looks like separate mushrooms everywhere, but beyond the veil, so to speak, or underneath the surface, they are all connected. And what's so interesting about that is I think this is definitely speaking about the connection of your higher selves and letting you know that you guys are always connected. Even if it doesn't look that way, you can reach out and communicate to this person at any time. And it's really cool to me that it came out with the lovers because the lovers for me has become this card that speaks about a psychic connection, a telepathic connection, as well as a divinely guided connection. In very many decks, we would see an angel in the sky and like the two lovers down here and the angel is bringing them together. I do want to carry over that meaning to this reading, even though the artwork is a little bit different. Um, but yes, this is your confirmation that this connection is divine and that you are constantly in communication. And in fact, your higher selves are talking to each other, whether you want to or not, whether you are aware of it or not. It's like, this is saying they are constantly talking to each other behind the scenes, so to speak. You guys are like mushrooms in that, or you're like trees, in that you have this network behind the veil. You have this network below the surface and you could never be disconnected. Like I said, this is happening whether you are trying to or not, but if you ever do want to intentionally reach out to this person that is something that you can do and i think the more you believe in your own psychic abilities and the more you believe in this fact that like heck you could reach out to me right now if you wanted to 
<laughs> you could reach out to my higher self right now. We are all part of this mushroom network at the end of the day. So I think the more you guys, the more you guys realize this truth and the more you guys live in this truth, I think that will bring you relief as well that at the end of the day, you could never really be separated from this person because I just am feeling a little bit of anxiety coming through whether you know this person yet or not. It feels like there's a little bit of separation anxiety. Like, I just want to find you soon. I just want to come home to you soon. And this is saying you are already together. Even if, even if it doesn't look that way physically, you are together, you are connected and your relationship is growing. So finally, we have page of coins and a tall tail. So this is a card that is associated with the throat chakra. Um, this like blue frame tells us that. And I think that this is speaking of something that you guys are going to be healing together. When I hear a tall tail, I think of I kind of think of bullshit or like, you know, somebody's been talking and talking a lot, but we kind of need to question what they're saying. We kind of need to question if it's really true, but because they speak with so much confidence, we just take it as a fact. And going back to this Saturn energy, going back to those like strict or disciplining parents, when you're little, everything that your parents say feels very tall, so to speak. It feels very important. They have more experience than us. They have more articulation than us. They have more confidence than us. And we just accept whatever they tell us as a fact. And with this page of coins, it's interesting because page of coins is like a child of money. <laughs> if you translate it, page is a youth or a younger individual and coins is obviously money. So it's like, you know, a child who is valuing or how I'm reading it in the context of this spread is like a child who is valued by material things, or even I would say who is valued by like superficial or shallow things. And I think this goes beyond just a parent and child relationship, but it really extends to what society teaches us. Like money is the most important thing. Status is the most important thing. And like your accomplishments rather than like your, your kindness, your gentleness, your compassion, your integrity. We seem to really put a value on these like tangible and material things. And when people keep repeating that to us with so much confidence, our brain just accepts it like it's true. And I think this is something that you guys are unraveling in your relationship together. I also want to add physical appearance into here. Like you're learning that all of this stuff really, really doesn't matter. And if any of you guys, I think we all have at some point, but if you guys have ever felt like insecure about your looks, where you're at in life, like what position you have or how much money you have or how popular you are, what possessions you have, you're coming into a space where none of that matters. Once you pass into this tree house, like none of that matters and you're just seen for your soul. It's almost like you guys are stripping each other, <laughs> like stripping each other down to your soul looking past the clothing, looking past the makeup, looking past the physical body, looking past the material possessions. And it's like, for some of you or for some of these partners, it's like, you're the only person, you're the first person who's taken the time to look, to look beyond all that, to look beyond the physical. You're the first person who's like, cared to strip down to my soul and to like hold my heart in your hands and see who I really am. So together you're unraveling, you're dismantling this idea that that the page of coins is the thing that matters the most or that we are the page of coins. That we're just here to create more material value. We're here to be aesthetically pleasing. No shit, we're just here to be ourselves. We're just here to enjoy ourselves. There's such an immense liberation that comes with this connection. Wow. So now I'm going to take this deck and we're going to see if there are any um, specific 
places or time frames that you guys should know about when it comes to this union. Okay, so we have second house. And we have Taurus, Taurus and second house, which is the same energy because Taurus and second house are associated with each other. Um, oh man, I just dropped some on the floor. That's all right. <laughs> um, so when it comes to a place that you guys could meet, it does seem like there is something involving work. The second house in Taurus energy is making me think of work and finances. So this could be somebody that you meet at work, whether you are working together or like they're coming into your workplace, you're coming into their workplace. It could also be through a work connection. So for example, this person knows your coworker or you know this person's coworker or something like that. It doesn't have to be that your work is directly related. Um, but it definitely could be. It could also be something like you guys have kind of similar careers, so you end up collaborating together. Um, for example, maybe one of you is a model and one of you is a photographer or some other example like that. <laughs> one of you is a wedding planner and one of you is a photographer. <laughs> I don't know why photographer keeps coming to my mind, but um, something related to your work or their work or your work connections or their work connections. This is what I see with Taurus and second house. So I'm just being very clumsy today. <laughs> is this my energy maybe? Okay, so let's see if there's any significant time frames that you guys should know about. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so this card like fell out of the deck and it was going right for the floor again, but then it landed precariously on the arm of my chair. I'm just, I'm usually not this clumsy and you know, I don't want to be like, oh, this is your energy. You're clumsy, but I mean, maybe. <laughs> Maybe you or your person is like the type who trips over things and drops things. Or I'm just in a clumsy mood. So we have Descendant. And we have Masculine. Who? So this has to do with um, the time, right? For Descendant, I'm thinking to say six months. The reason for that is because the descendant rules the seventh house. And so I'm just thinking like from the first house to the seventh house, that is six months. <laughs> if, if the, you know what I mean? It's like half the zodiac wheel. So in terms of masculine, this is very interesting. Masculine is not referring to a specific time frame, but what it is saying is that at some point, there would be an inspired action that is being taken that could speed up this process. So your angels are currently asking you to let go of this situation. It's their turn to orchestrate things. It's their turn to set things up for you. But I think that there's going to come a time in approximately <laughs> six months, give or take, it could be five, it could be seven, there will come a time where you feel really, really called to take action, really, really called to make a move. And when this call comes, go for it. That's that masculine energy. That's that go-getting, action-taking energy. What your angels are saying is, if you still feel confused, about what you're supposed to do, it's probably not time to take action yet because when it is time, you're gonna be overcome with this fire. You're gonna be overcome with this urge that is impossible to ignore. And actually for many of you, it's gonna feel like you are possessed. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you before. Um, I have in some situations, it's almost as if some angel or spirit guide is coming down and like making you do something. It's a really weird feeling. Um, but for example, let's say you are talking to this person 
you know, you're having a, a chat and then you're about to end the conversation and all of a sudden you're like, I was wondering if you wanted to go out with me. And you're, you're like, what, where the fuck did that come from? It's this feeling of like, I cannot, I cannot even stop this urge. It's like a, it's like holding in a sneeze. You, <laughs> it will feel uncomfortable to not take action. And I think this is when you'll know that the time is right. So if you're still in that, like, uh, I don't know, like overthinking the situation and feeling iffy and feeling afraid about it or what you should do, it, it seems like that is not the time to take action. When it is time, it will be so hard to ignore. It will be so hard to control yourself. Um, yeah, you will just whoosh, like, <laughs> you will just explode and move towards the connection. And yes, again, this is very approximate. I am feeling this is very approximate. So it could be less than six months. It could be a little bit more than six months, but that is roughly, that is roughly what I'm seeing. So we are going to finish off this reading with some Oracle cards for messages and guidance from your spirit guides. We have be authentic. Isn't that amazing? It just matches so well with what we've been talking about. Be real and true to who you are and how you feel, letting your true colors really come out. We also have gold with divine intervention. Yes. And this is the crystal angels oracle deck. So angels are definitely at work here. They are definitely building your sky bridge. They will definitely instill you <laughs> with very intense urges when it's time to take action. God sends miracles to answer sincere prayers. You guys might also want to get into the habit of praying to your angels more or just talking to your angels more and letting them know what is on your mind, letting them know what you want and doing so without inhibition. Like, don't hold back is what I want to say. Don't hold back when it comes to what you want. Don't feel like you are asking for too much. If you are frustrated with the process, open up about that. If you are confused about divine timing, open up about that. It's, it's okay. You can be authentic with your angels. You can show your happiness. You can show your frustration. You can show your sadness. I think it's a little bit damaging to think we have to just be like, oh, everything is amazing. And I'm so grateful for this divine timing. Like if you feel like it sucks, if you feel like you're getting impatient, that's okay. You can open up about that. Your angels are not going to judge you or think that you're being ungrateful or think that you're not evolved or something like you're, we're human, we're humans and angels understand that. And they understand how hard, hard it is to be human. So this I definitely think is speaking about your relationship and being authentic with your partner, but I also think this is speaking about you guys being authentic with your angels. And the more authentic you are with them, the more that they can help you. The more you open up and say, look, I know that I know that I'm like that I should let go and that I should trust you guys, but I'm finding it really, really difficult. Like you're allowed to say that. And if you open up about that, they can come through and help you. They can help you to trust more. They can help you to be more patient. You're not alone when it comes to these things. So just open up about every last little thing. Like you see this guy, he's rolling in gold. Like <laughs> he's not gonna run out of love and blessings to give you anytime soon. He can just freely hand that out. So don't be afraid to ask for more. And then finally we have fresh air. Your body needs refreshment from oxygenated air generated by grass, trees, plants, and flowers. Spend time outside today, as near to Mother Nature's cradle as possible. Open your curtains and windows to refresh your home as well. This is how you can communicate with your angels better, is by being outside. I personally find that a lot of revelations come to me when I'm like walking or running outside. I just feel like I can hear my angels a lot better as opposed to like when I'm sitting at home or like when I'm with people, when I'm on my phone, being out in nature is just really calming and really, really clears your mind. And also being out of your usual environment, I think can help as well. Like just, especially if you work at home, and you're just like in the same room or in the same house all day, it might be really good to just like 
get outside and refresh every now and then especially if you guys are the type to overthink and to start feeling frazzled and overwhelmed by all the thoughts in your head there is a need to I guess put in more efforts to care for your mind and to get it refreshed so this is your little piece of guidance from your angels in terms of your overall well-being and also how to connect with and how to how to hear them better so these are all the messages that I'm seeing for you guys. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon. So if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick of cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. I'm sending you guys lots of love, sending your person lots of love, sending your guides and their guides lots of love, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye! Hi number fours, so if you guys chose the Amethyst and the Pastel Journey Tarot, this is going to be a reading all about your next significant relationship. So just before we get into it, I did want to do a sort of disclaimer that this reading is not going to tell you who you have to be with or who you're inevitably going to end up with. Remember that you always have free will and whom you choose to pursue or to give your energy to is entirely up to you. What we will be looking at in this reading is who's going to be entering or re-entering your life next with who you are energetically aligned at the time that you're watching this video and with whom you have the potential for a significant relationship. You are very welcome to watch this reading with a specific person that you already have in mind. However, I do also feel called to encourage you guys to just keep an open mind about who might be wanting to come through today, whether that is somebody you know already or not. So, with all that being said, let's get into your reading. I'm actually going to put this aside for just a second because we're gonna start off by getting some physical and personality traits for your person. This yellow deck here is physical traits. This blue deck is personality traits. In a second, I'm also gonna be bringing out a zodiac oracle so we can see um, any significant zodiac signs, but let's start off with the personality and see what we can find out about your person. Okay, so we are starting off with new person. So for many of you, this will be somebody that you haven't met yet. We also have confidence. We have insightful and curious. Wow, I really like those coming out together. So this is definitely somebody who is thirsty for knowledge. I think this is someone who will take a great interest in learning all about you. They will ask very interesting questions. And actually, I think that's something that will really stand out when you meet this person. For example, when you're having your first conversation or going on your first date with this person is that rather than just the typical small talk or asking the same questions that everybody else asks, they ask questions that are really interesting and that really make you think. I'm thinking of like, uh, what is his name? Sean, like the interviewer of Hot Ones or Zach Sang. You know, when they interview people, the celebrities are like, oh my gosh, that's such a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Or like, how did you know that? They get really really deep and they're really thoughtful and they really make the people feel like they care about getting to know them and that there's something special about them and they're not just like saying and asking the same things. This person is very, very thoughtful in that way. Um, when you meet them again, you can tell that they actually listen and remember to what you say remember what you said and took it to heart like this person really really has a way of making you feel um, special and if there's anything that you guys are passionate about if there's anything that you guys are interested in or that just makes up a really big part of your life I think that this person is going to be really interested in getting to know all about that and will make you feel like what you do is really fascinating so like I don't know to use myself as an example 
if, if I'm on a date with somebody and I start talking about like, oh, I'm a tarot reader, maybe they have really, really interesting questions about tarot. And maybe the next time I see them, they're like, I bought myself a tarot deck and I think it's really cool that the Hierophant is blah, 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 blah. So it's like, wow, you really listen and you really cared what I had to say. And like, you are valuing what I do and taking that on into your life. It's just, it's just a really, really nice energy. Um, I also think with insightful, really the main thought that I had when I made this card is that this is somebody who is capable of deep introspection, they are capable of reflection, they're able to come to their own conclusions about things rather than just, you know, accepting the popular opinion or taking the insights that are spoon fed to them, they are able to create their own ideas and create their own conclusions and when there's any sort of conflict or challenge in their life this is someone who's really good at seeing the lesson behind it seeing the opportunity behind it the opportunity for growth for learning and even to see the blessing behind it they're able to see what the deeper meaning is to things that are happening in their life i think that this is a highly intelligent person a highly caring person i would say this person especially has a lot of emotional intelligence and <laughs> i'm getting the message they're genuinely just so happy to be alive and to be able to experience life and to be able to meet and learn from people it's a really, really sweet energy that is coming through. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like putting this card, but we have Petty here. So if you, if someone's ever bothering you, if you ever want to vent, if you ever want to complain about somebody, <laughs> this would be an amazing person to go to because as mature as they are, they're not above the catharsis of being petty, okay? <laughs> like, they they can be messy with you, they can complain with you, they have that side to them for sure. And then we also have temper. Hmm, okay, I'm getting a little bit of sass from this person now. <laughs> This is this is one of those people who it's like, they're the nicest person in the world, but you better not test their patience. And actually, they might get misunderstood quite a bit, like when people see how kind they are and how thoughtful they are, some bad eggs might start to think like, oh, I can walk all over this person, I can make this person do whatever I want. Like they start to underestimate the tough cookie that your person is and this person definitely has some boundaries that you better not cross and I think it's especially like if you start to mess with their loved ones or if you start to say negative things about their loved ones, like you better frickin' watch out. <laughs> they are not gonna take that lightly. So this is like a don't take advantage of my kindness, don't mess with my kindness. I could see, even though it's not here, I would add protective in here, that this person will be incredibly protective over you. And not in a possessive or controlling way, but just like, I want you to be safe and happy no matter what. And if anybody tries to mess with that, they better run for their life. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a couple physical cards as well. I was meaning to take two, but most people are getting three or four, and you guys just got four <laughs> that fell out all at the same time. So let's take a look at what we have. First, we have freckles, beauty mark, or birthmark. So this could be somebody, something that stands out to you in this person. It could also be a way that you identify them. Like maybe they have a very prominent beauty mark or a very unusual birthmark, or they have freckles or all of the above. We also have voice. So there will be something about this person's voice that is incredibly attractive to you. Their talking voice, as well as it could be their... Um, their singing voice too. Um, when I wrote this card, I was just thinking of a voice that is very beautiful, very soothing. You could listen to this person talk for hours. They might have a laugh that is very adorable and very beautiful to you as well. We have shorter. So this could mean that the person is shorter than you, or it could just mean that they are a little bit shorter than average. Um, like for their gender, for example. I don't know how tall the average woman is, but, and honestly, it probably depends on the country too, but <laughs> again, this is kind of 
subjective just they seem maybe they're shorter than other people that you've dated or something like that and then we have facial hair so of course this will only apply to those people who grow facial hair but if this is somebody who can grow a beard and a mustache then they might grow that out sometimes um okay so there's so many different parts to this reading and i'm even though this is the fourth group i keep like forgetting <laughs> okay so next we are going to take a look at zodiac signs i hope i have enough room for them so this could be um specific zodiac signs that this person has in their chart or it could just be their general energy their personality if you do have if you do have somebody in mind this could be a confirmation if their zodiac signs come out although i am feeling for many of you like i said this will be a new person that you have not met yet could also be somebody that you met uh very recently at the time that you are watching this Okay, so we have Mercury. This is Gemini and Virgo energy, and we have thoughts, intellect, communication, Gemini, Virgo, <laughs> Wednesday, agility, mentality, information, perception, memory, travel, transportation, education, research. Okay, so some of you guys, you could meet this person online, or this could be a long distance situation or somebody who is from a different country than you. Um, also with education here, this could be somebody that you meet at, at school if you are a student or maybe you guys went to the same school or you studied the same things or this person might actually be a teacher as their profession. Um, I'm not surprised to see intellect and communication here because we have seen that this person is very curious and insightful and very intelligent. I would say that this person is quite chatty. Um, I would say that they are more on the extroverted side. So if this person, for example, were to go to a party, they would probably wanna like talk to a bunch of people there and make friends with people. They wouldn't be like in a rush to go home or to be alone. I think this person very much likes being with people. Um, this person could have a big family, I feel as well, or family is very important to them because Mercury energy makes me think of siblings. So maybe this person has a lot of siblings or they have a lot of cousins or something like that, or they have like a larger friend circle. Um, what else do we have? Agility. I think that this is talking about mental agility, but <laughs> physical agility is coming to my mind as well. So maybe there is some kind of physical activity that this person does, some kind of sport or outdoor activity um, that they are very good at. Information. I think this person has a good memory like we spoke about before. Oh, and this also says memory. <laughs> And travel and transportation, that's the thing that initially made me think of long distance, but it could also be that you guys will travel together in your relationship. And then we have Libra. So um, this person might have Mercury in Libra. Um, they could be, for example, a Virgo sun with Mercury in Libra or um, a Libra sun with Mercury in Virgo or something like that. They could also have, you can be a Scorpio sun with Mercury in Libra as well. So this card says the mediator, fair, people pleaser, balanced, sociable, sensible, diplomatic, polished, easygoing, fickle, indecisive, harmonious, self-indulgence, ruler of seventh house. Um, what I want to say with Libra is that this person is likely a romantic and when it comes to expressing romantic, romantic feelings, this is not a person who is going to shy away from that. So when this person is developing feelings for you, they will be very open about that. They will be very open about, you know, telling you how much they care about you and how special you are to them. Of course, they will show this with their actions as well, but I just kind of feeling like they're not gonna skimp out on the words. Like they're very big on words of affirmation, you know, telling you that they love you, telling you how amazing you are, how beautiful you are. They could also really have a way with words. Um, even if they're just texting you, it's like they're so eloquent and their words just give you butterflies. This person might even write you um, 
write you love letters or write you poems or something like that or they would be very good at that i can say at least this person would also be an amazing writer like an amazing author I don't know if that is what they do, but <laughs> their guides are saying that they definitely have the potential to do that. And if they were ever to pursue that career path, um, their guides would be super, super excited and super supportive of that. Um, now we do have this message. First of all, we have sociable, which we've already seen, but we also have this people pleaser kind of energy. Um, and this indecisive message. Now, I don't really get the sense that this person struggles with healthy boundaries like we kind of spoke about earlier, but I think sometimes when, they, when they're trying to make important decisions, they could struggle if they are taking like if they're taking too many people's opinions into account or they're trying to make too many people happy. I think that this person whenever they're making an important decision, they will think over it and think over it and think over it until they are sure that they've found the best possible solution that makes everybody involved happy. And honestly, I think this in itself is a very beautiful trait, but they could be a little bit stubborn where, you know, sometimes you just have to make a decision that's going to upset somebody. Sometimes you just have to make a decision that's going to inconvenience somebody. Sometimes maybe there's no way to find a solution that everybody is going to be equally happy with and where where I don't even know what an average person is but like where most people might say like okay there's nothing we can do here I'm really sorry but I have to do this they're like no there must be a way there must be a way that we can all be happy and it's like maybe they will need a little bit of help to know like it's okay you don't have to think about this so much anymore like just do what is best for you and we'll all figure our own stuff out like i really appreciate that you're looking out for us but you got to do what's best for you like you just got to do what's best for you and even like even their boundaries that we've spoken about and their temper that we've spoken about you know usually we have this anger come up when we are protecting something and i feel like if anything this person might get more angry like when a loved loved one's boundaries are cross over rather than their own you know i think they know very well what their boundaries are but it's like you know give it that little <laughs> Give it that same passion. Give it that same oomph that you give when you are defending your loved ones. Like you deserve to be assertive and stand up for yourself like that as well. Um, what else do we have? We have harmonious. We have diplomatic. I think that this would be someone with whom um, heated arguments are minimal. There might be some things that you disagree about. There might be some conflicts that you guys go through, but they are all about talking this through in a peaceful way. And like I said before, they're going to do like exhaust all options to find a conclusion or to find an outcome that is going to make both of you guys happy. So next we are going to take a few little oracle cards from this deck and get three keywords for your relationship before moving on to the tarot so we have expansion growth and progress i feel like you guys are going to be instrumental in each other's growth you're really going to feel like i'm a better person since i've been with you they're going to feel like they're a better person since they've been with you we also have choice, decision, options, possibilities, hesitation. So I think there's going to come a point in your relationship and this message of like travel and long distance and things like that, it keeps coming up for me. So if you guys are not long distance with each other, there might come a point in your relationship where somebody, either you or this person is getting an opportunity to relocate somewhere or to make a very big transition in their life and because you guys are so close like the big decisions you make or the big decisions they make will inevitably affect each other so it's like at some point in your relationship i think you guys are going to come to a crossroads and that might be kind of difficult and let's get one more Choice could also be like you're helping this person to be more decisive because we did have that indecisive energy with Libra. 
Ooh, and we also have feminine, creation, nurturing, receptivity. So your partner, regardless of their gender, they do seem to be very in touch with their feminine side. So very in touch with their creative side, with their compassionate side, with their nurturing side. They could also have like some feminine traits or feminine features. Again, that is regardless of their gender. Um, and again, I think they have a very soothing and healing kind of vibe to them. Like when you're with them, you just feel so calm. You just feel so soothed. This person could be, there could be something about their physical touch that is very calming as well. Something about their physical touch and something about their words. So this would be someone who's really good at reassuring you when you're worried or cheering you up when you're sad. Like you just crawl into their arms and they whisper sweet nothings to you and you feel better. They have that very loving, nurturing and calming presence. Like, like just that feeling that everything is going to be okay. All right, so we are moving into your tarot now. And in this part of the reading, we're just gonna get more details about what your relationship is like. Okay, so for group four, what is their next relationship going to be like? Oh, I also want to add Taurus because this feminine card is reminding me of the Empress. Um, and Libra is also um, associated with the Empress, but Taurus too, which we didn't mention before. So we have the Six of Pentacles. Okay, we have two coming out at the same time, so I'm going to keep them together. We have Judgment and Temperance coming out together. Woo! <laughs> we have two coming out together again. We have Strength and we have the Four of Cups. And we have the Ten of Cups. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so this could really be the one. I don't know what it is with today's reading, but I, I keep wanting to read the spreads this way, even though I usually go that way. So yeah, I'm going to go from right to left. Um, but we also have some clarifying oracle cards for these tarot cards. So I'm going to lay them out. To clarify the Six of Pentacles, we have Feeling the World. To clarify Judgment and Temperance, we have Rainbow Waterfall with Miracles. Oh, and these are mirroring because this is the number 13 and this is the number 31. So 13 and 31 or repeating ones and threes could be important for you guys. We have wood wives with adaptability to clarify strength and four of cups. And to clarify the 10 of cups, we have Rose Valley go forth with a soft and open heart, love, feminine energy again, and vulnerability. I wonder if you guys, some of you guys watching might be like um, two feminines in a relationship. And it's interesting because the two of cups that we showed in the intro and that you guys um, chose this group with, I think that that was two women as well. So this is really interesting to me because this image that we see here is really really similar to what we would traditionally see on the ten of cups um, under this rainbow we would normally see a couple who has their arms around each other and they're looking up to the sky and then there's some children frolicking and playing as well so it's really nice how these two go together i feel like this really completes to the sentiment of the ten of cups um and I love that this is just a card that talks about love and the Ten of Cups is a card that talks about like your happily ever after, your complete emotional fulfillment. And it was from these cards that I felt like if you believe that there is, you know, the one, a one who is out there for you, I really think that this person is it because the Ten of Cups tells me that this person would make you 
happier than you have ever been, happier than anybody else has ever made you, that this person would really be everything that you have wanted in a partner and more, that this person is really your best friend and there is a potential for an incredibly happy and harmonious long-term future together and i think that with this message of going forward with a soft and open heart and vulnerability this is like your guide's confirmation i'm thinking of it's in the romance angels oracle deck and it says it is safe for you to love open your heart to receive open your heart to receive the highest love of all or the highest energy of all. I haven't used that deck in ages, but that card is really, really standing out to me. Like it is safe for you to open up your heart to this person. I think that right from the get-go when you meet this person, you are going to get a really, really good vibe from them. You are going to feel really, really cared for by them. They're an excellent communicator. Like we said earlier, they make you feel special. They really listen and take an interest to what you are saying. Um, they communicate with you consistently and show their feelings for you consistently. And what might happen in this case is that some of you might have a hard time receiving this and i think i think a lot of us would be this way like when we've been through toxic relationships when we've been through disappointments and then we meet someone and everything is just going so well i think that our brain can kind of flag that like this is suspicious activity <laughs> this is this is not how it's meant to go you know that feeling when everything is just going too well and it feels like uncanny it feels eerie um personally i'm a pretty anxious person and then when i have nothing to be anxious about that makes me anxious because i'm like i must be missing something or like it's only a matter of time until shit hits the fan again so as you're dating and getting to know this person you might have that feeling like wait a minute this person is too nice this feels too healthy this relationship is going too well like, what am I missing? There must be some shit that I am missing. There must be some red flag that I am missing because over time, your brain has become like a red flag hunting machine to keep you safe. And again, I think a lot of us have developed this in relationships and develop walls that we put up to keep us safe because we know that there is some scary stuff out there. And... This is reassurance from your guides that you are safe to let those walls down because you're going to really be feeling like you want to. You're going to be feeling really safe and warm and snuggly and soothed and calm and warm around this person and your heart's going to be really telling you to melt those walls down and your brain I think is going to be freaking out a little bit like is this okay? Is this safe? And this is the confirmation that yes, it is safe. It is safe for you to love. It is safe for you to go forth with a soft and open heart. And this lovely human being that you're seeing and that you're getting to know, that is really who this person is. And that is who they're going to continue to be in the long term. Like this person is not going to switch up on you. This person's not being nice to you, like to win your affection. And then haha, like suddenly they're going to take off their mask and they're an evil villain. Like, that's what your guides really want you to know. Like, we've brought you this beautiful divine love and you are safe here. And that's what your heart is telling you. And that's what your soul is telling you. Moving on to these cards. So strength for me, some of you guys might know when it comes out in a relationship reading, when we're looking into the nature of a connection and, and what the relationship is like. Oh, Okay, there's a, there's a few messages coming here, but I just want to finish this thought. This for me is like souls who are best friends. So really, really close soul family members. I feel that with the 10 of cups as well. So I definitely don't think that it is your first time around with this person. Um, but the other message that was coming through as I was talking about that, here we have like the strength and the four of cups. And I think something that both of you guys have in common is that you don't settle and not settling is pretty difficult like if i can give a concrete example let's say somebody is quite lonely and let's say that they are tired of being lonely they want 
love, they want connection in their life, and they keep being presented opportunities to enter into relationships, but deep down they can tell, like, no, I don't really vibe with this person, or maybe this connection isn't really for me. And sometimes we can let our loneliness win and let that feeling of lack kind of cloud our judgment and we'll say okay well being in a relationship with this person even though it's not ideal it's better than being alone and then we take the relationship and what i'm seeing with strength and also with this four of cups like she's receiving an offer and she looks very wary of it she doesn't look like she really wants to take it is like both you and this person possess that inner strength to say like I would rather be alone and I would rather go without rather than having something that is not for my highest good rather than having something that isn't a match for me like being alone is freaking tough and going without is freaking tough but I will gladly do that rather than settling rather than lowering my lowering my standards rather than compromising and i think one of the things that makes this so tough is that we have that voice in our head saying like am i being too picky am i being ungrateful for what the universe is offering me should i maybe be lowering my standards am i crazy for waiting this long am i crazy for holding out am i delusional for thinking that my perfect match is out there do i need to just be realistic and like settle for this like we have that voice that keeps questioning us like just take something and i think that you guys have been kind of stubborn like both of you and saying no i'm waiting for my ten of cups and this is something that you guys have in common and i think that i think that this is why you guys are coming together and with this adaptability i think that you guys again this is a testament to your inner strength no matter what cards you are dealt no pun intended no matter what hand life deals you like you're gonna find a way to be happy where you are with what you have you're gonna find a way to see the positive in your situation so you guys are incredibly brave you guys are incredibly strong and whether you like have just recently met or you know each other or not i you guys were holding out for each other like you had your ten of cups in mind and they had their ten of cups in mind and then you know your ten of cups is each other and you're like i'm gonna keep waiting for this and i'll do what i can in my current situation to be grateful and to find my happiness and some of you guys have been waiting for each other for more than one lifetime like maybe you guys didn't get around to finding each other in the last one or or in the one before that but you never you'll never give up on each other so moving on here we have judgment and temperance together i don't know if like 2014 is a significant year for any of you but i just read them like that and then we also have the rainbow waterfall with miracles so this is another card both strength and temperance and actually oh my gosh and the six of pentacles too these are all there's like a few cards in the deck that really strongly indicate spiritual connections and soulmate connections for me ten of cups is one of them strength is one of them temperance is one of them and the six of pentacles is one of them so <laughs> there's really really a lot of indicators of this and actually even if you haven't met this person yet you probably know their energy very very well already you can just feel it within you you can feel it inside you temperance tells me that you guys have been together for a very 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 long time both of you guys are likely old souls this is not your first rodeo this is not your first time around and i think that you have had many incarnations together whether that be here on this earth or elsewhere temperance just gives me counterpart energy and it gives me this feeling of people who really balance each other out and actually in terms of your 3D relationship, I'm seeing how these go together because in the 3D sense, temperance is somebody who is healthy, like physically healthy, mentally, emotionally healthy, someone who is taking good care of themselves, um, who has a very well-rounded, balanced life, who has a good head on their shoulders, and judgment is somebody who has a higher perspective. 
And I think we were speaking about this before, like someone who is very insightful, someone who is mature, somebody who takes accountability for their actions and, you know, puts in the efforts to reach their full potential and to be the best self they can be. So these two cards together are really, really powerful. I think that both of you, and it even goes back to what we were talking about with strength. Both of you guys have immense respect for yourselves and you're willing to take the hard way if it means doing what's best for you, if it means aligning with your highest good, if it means reaching your fullest potential. Like you take caring for yourself seriously and you take accountability and responsibility for yourself. I feel a great maturity and a great um, old soulness with both of you. And when you come together, this energy is just amplified because you take on each other's best interests. So, you know, I'm very interested in becoming my best version of myself and I'm very interested in you becoming your best version of yourself. And I'm here to offer you any support that you need. I am here to cheer you on. I'm here to let you know how much of an amazing job you're doing. And also I'm here to keep you on track when you're struggling to stay motivated. I'm here to give you encouragement. Um, when you are maybe starting to act out of alignment or when I see that you need to be called out a little bit, then I will call you out. Like I'm here, I am your partner, I'm your teammate. We are gonna do this life thing together and we are gonna become the best versions of ourselves together. So when I put these two cards together, this is what I really see. Also, I'm just noticing that temperance is related to Sagittarius energy. Oh, and Leo energy with strength, which I forgot to mention. <laughs> um, but Sagittarius also talks about travel, like Sagittarian energy. So there's, and we have even like the world here. So there's something about travel or long distance or relocation or different backgrounds or something like that in your relationship. And I think that when you guys are presented with something that is different from what you have experienced you like make it your mission to understand it and this is a sign of how can i say it without being mean i think that sometimes people have like an intellectual laziness or closed-mindedness where when they see something that's different from what they're used to they're just like no that's weird that's bad my way is better but i think when you guys are presented with something that is different like a different view a different culture a different way of living you want to learn about it you want to understand it you want to see what it's all about and maybe integrate some aspects of it if you think that it would be beneficial for you so i see both of you as incredibly like mentally strong and open-minded and i think that that adds to having these kind of minimal heated arguments because i think both of you go through life thinking like i'm just a silly human and i can learn so much from everyone and everything and like who am i to say that you know, that my way of thinking is the best. And it's like, you're open to learning from each other. You're open to taking on, like, I'm going to take on aspects of you and integrate that into my life. And you're pouring your cup into each other, like temperance, and you're becoming more and more like each other. I think that as you go on to date this person, you'll really start to pick up on each other's like habits, on each other's ways of life, on each other's mannerisms, on each other's way of talking, maybe even like your voice, your voices start to sound similar, your inflection starts to sound similar. And this is probably something Honestly, that has been cultivated for many lifetimes, <laughs> but I think it's something that people around you are going to notice. Like, oh, you guys are starting to look like each other. You guys are starting to sound like each other. Um, oh, and I didn't even talk about the rainbow waterfall yet. Rainbow waterfall with miracles. I think that the way you come together with this person is going to be incredibly serendipitous. Like, the way you bump into them. I don't think that you will be expecting to meet them or expecting for them to come into your life. I will say with this new person energy, some of you guys might even be like hung up on somebody else when this person comes into your life. Like you really weren't expecting 
this new person to come in, this beautiful relationship to come in. Maybe that's just for a few of you, but I did want to um, point that out because I was kind of getting that feeling. Um, it will feel nothing short of a miracle the way you guys come together. It will feel like fate. And I also think that you're going to experience some amazing miracles when you are together because your souls are like celebrating your union. You guys have been looking for each other for such a long time. It really feels like that when you do find each other in this lifetime in the 3D and come together, it's really a cause for celebration, both for you guys, for your souls, and for your other soul family members. Whether they're incarnated or not, I think you guys have a lot of soul family members, a lot of spirit guides who are really, really excited about this connection, really, really happy that you guys have found each other. Um, it's really beautiful to see and actually I often see, I just noticed these butterflies and the rainbow as well has red, yellow, blue. I often see, I don't know if you would call this clairvoyance because I see it more so in my mind's eye, but when I'm talking to like different spirit guides or different soul groups i kind of see different colors so like you know this angel is this color this spirit guide is that color and when i'm talking to a family of souls i guess just to make it easy to understand i'm usually shown like the primary colors like red yellow blue so that i understand like okay there's a group of souls here there's a family of souls here that like travel in a pack it doesn't necessarily mean that there are three of them at least i don't think so um but those primary colors for me it's like code for a soul family so i definitely think that you guys have very loving soul group members i'm more so getting the feeling that they are not incarnate on earth right now but are definitely watching over you and definitely supporting you in this union rainbows and waterfalls might also be um, and roses too might be significant imagery, significant symbols for you, and also butterflies. If you see these, um, this is your soul family just showering you with love. So next we have the Six of Pentacles and feeling the world. So like I mentioned before, Six of Pentacles for me is a soulmate card that might be a little bit unusual, but I personally see it like the second two of cups <laughs> of the tarot deck and, and often kind of read it in the same way when it comes to relationships and connections. The reason for that is that very often we would see two people and then one person on top. I think of the person on top as like the divine or a spirit guide and then the two people at the bottom as the counterparts. And in the Rider Weight deck, the two people in the Six of Pentacles are dressed in blue and yellow, which is, oh my gosh, they're dressed in blue and yellow and the person on top is dressed in red. And that's the same. We have a red butterfly, a yellow butterfly, and a blue butterfly. It's almost like you and your person are the yellow and blue butterfly. And then <laughs> this red butterfly is like, okay guys, I'm gonna sit this one out you guys go and incarnate and I'll guide you <laughs> and I'll help you come together. So maybe you are a group of three actually because, and I wish I had the Rider Waite deck down here so that you could see, but there's like the person dressed in red who is guiding and then the yellow and blue who are like out on the ends and they're being brought together. That's really, really cool. Um, yeah, so there's some loving being, a spirit guide, soul family member, who is bringing the two of you together. And the other thing that makes me think of the Two of Cups is just because the Six of Pentacles has this message of balance and reciprocity that I think is really, really beautiful. It shows me an equal energy exchange. It shows me two counterparts who care equally for each other, for the connection, and who are willing to put in equal actions and equal efforts. I think this is going to be another way that you can identify this person is that First of all, amazing communicator, very expressive. But in terms of like pulling your weight in the connection, it feels very even. It feels like you never have to like chase this person just to get an answer from them or it's not like pulling teeth trying to get communication or trying to get them to commit. Everything falls into place naturally because you're both 
It's like an equal inhale and exhale. And when you are putting in all the effort in a relationship, it kind of feels like you've taken this big inhale, but the exhale doesn't come. That answer to the question doesn't come. And I think that you're going to feel that this relationship is very light. You're going to feel that there is minimal stress, minimal burden, because you're both giving 100%. And this is going to feel very, I don't know if it's for you or for them, but for one of you, it's feeling very refreshing. So I don't know if one of you or maybe both of you had that history of like one-sided connections where you had to do everything, where you were like invested in the other person more than they were invested or even invested in them more than they were invested in themselves and like just constantly pouring energy into them. But when you're both like temperance, when you're both pouring energy into each other, it's just so beautiful and healthy and balanced. Um, we have this feeling the world card. This is a card that reminds me of empathic abilities. So this might be something that the numbers three and one just keep popping out to me as being significant. Maybe like March 1st or January 3rd is an important date or maybe the 13th of of a certain month is important for you guys or something like that. Um, I wonder if that's a soul family number or something because I see one and threes together a lot, but I never really knew what it was what it was trying to say. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so I think that after coming together with this person, your empathic abilities might really, really start to heighten or just your psychic abilities in general. Um, could also be your clairvoyant abilities because we spoke about that earlier, as well as your claircognizant abilities. Um, there's something activating. I, I often use that word because I just, I don't know what's a better word, but like when you guys come together, there's something that is activated in you that I think is going to cause um, your psychic abilities to heighten and that will make you feel more I think the best way to say it is alive that will make you feel more alive that will make you feel more connected that will make you feel more tapped in it's it's a little bit hard of a feeling to describe but it's very pleasurable feeling <laughs> And this card is also related to the sacral chakra. So this is an energy center that deals with closeness, connections, intimacy. So this makes sense, like feeling very connected to the world. Um, it also has to do with creativity. So after you meet this person, you might get kind of creative bug where suddenly you are full of ideas for creative projects or suddenly you really want to express yourself in that way where you never did before. Like, you meet this person, you go home and write a poem about them, even though you're not really into that kind of thing, or you've had writer's block for such a long time, but then after you meet them, suddenly like the ideas are flowing again. I think something about them's turning on like a creative bug. Three is the number of creativity and expansion, so that makes sense. Um, but, oh my gosh, and I just noticed, we are talking about one and threes being significant. You also got 64, which reduces to one. So ones and threes. <laughs> um, all right. So for this next part of the reading, we're going to see if there are any significant places or time frames that you guys should know about when it comes to your union. There's so many cards here because there's a couple extras, but it looks like everything will fit. Okay, so we're gonna start with significant places. That's a lot. I only want, <laughs> I only want two. You might actually, cause way more cards just like fell out than I wanted. You might bump into this person in many different places because we were talking about it feeling like serendipitous, feeling faded. So it could be like you have bumped into this person, um, you were really drawn to them, but you didn't get to talk to them. And then you bump into them again and you get to talk to them. Or maybe like you meet this person online and then you bump into them in person. 
I think there's gonna be several encounters almost like several first encounters. There's like a first encounter of knowing about them, a first encounter of maybe like online interaction, a first encounter of seeing them in person, a first encounter of talking to them. Um, and it's almost as if the design divine is showing you like, we're not gonna give up on this so easily. Like we'll just keep making you bump into each other however many times it takes for you guys to initiate that contact and to build that bond. Um, but we have Neptune here. So yes, I'm really feeling online for many of you. Neptune makes me think of the internet and Mercury makes me think of the internet as well. And we also have new moon. So I'm really feeling for many of you it's like you haven't met this person yet oh my gosh and there's a yellow and blue moth or butterflies again i think for many of you you haven't met this person yet or you haven't met them in the 3d yet or maybe you've like just met them that's really the vibe that is um continuing through this reading but let's see if we can get any um significant time frames. I will say with new moon and Neptune, the new moon in Pisces might be important for you guys. Um, this is a timeless reading, but at the time that this video is uploaded, there will actually be a new moon in Pisces very soon. I believe it's like March 1st or March. Oh my gosh. No way. I, okay. I don't know if it's like March 1st or March 2nd, I'm going to check, but isn't it crazy that we, the one and threes keep repeating. And I said like March 1st might be a significant date. And then there's the new moon in Pisces, which if it's not on March 1st, it's really, really close to that date. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> I wonder something will happen on that day. And that's like, uh, the soonest time frame I think that we've gotten out of all of them. We have six, And we have Aries. So Aries season might be significant for you guys. And also what's kind of interesting, Pisces and Aries season are right next to each other. So that could be a window of time that is going to be important for you guys. So like from late February to late April. Um, but also what's kind of cool is at the time that this video is uploaded, I think that Aries season is starting in more or less six weeks like give or take, but <laughs> if I do the math in my head, it's pretty close to that. And I also feel a ringing in my ear or hear a ringing in my ear right now. So I think that that's going to be a really significant time frame for you guys. Now, if you happen to stumble upon, stumble upon this reading when Pisces and Aries season have already passed, then I think that the time frame for you guys would be um, around two months because Pisces and Aries season is like a two month window. So if you're already past it, then just apply that same window <laughs> to whenever you are, um, whenever you're watching this video. Yes. So, um, for the last part of this reading, we are going to look at these oracle cards to get some last messages and advice from your spirit guides when it comes to this connection. So first we have rest and relaxation is essential. We all have a fundamental need to take a break. Um, the first interpretation that I'm getting from this kind of has, sorry, <laughs> I felt a burp coming up, um, kind of has nothing to do with love at all. And I think it's just a general message for you that you need a break, that you've been working very, very hard and you deserve rest and you should not feel guilty about that. Um, some of you guys might have had a past life together in a kind of aquatic world. If you feel very, very drawn to marine aquatic underwater kind of things because there was that feeling maybe you guys have had an incarnation together somewhere else i don't know if that resonates with you but you might have had a past incarnation in a kind of watery world um also more specifically how it pertains to your love life and i don't think this is for everybody but those of you who did resonate with like being hung up on somebody else and then there's a new person coming in, this card could be talking about like give yourself time to 
rest and to release past relationships like give yourself a break from relationships before diving into the new one we have fluorite with natural beauty and authenticity be yourself as god made you naturally attractive and lovable inside and out so i love when this card comes through in relationship readings well any reading at all but it's it's really sweet when it comes through in a relationship reading because it tells us that or reminds us that you do not have to change anything about yourself to be attractive and lovable to the right person and if you guys have oh there's another angel number i just um looked up at the camera and it said 5353 um oh five three that's like the 5d and the 3d three and five together is the 5d and the 3d so you guys have a beautiful 3d connection a beautiful physical connection and you also have a beautiful spiritual connection um what was i ah I was talking about you do not have to change yourself to be attractive or lovable to the right people. Um, if you guys have ever felt or if anybody has made you feel like you need to change yourself to be like acceptable to them or to be dateable to them or whatever it might be, that was not the right person for you. Now, of course, I will say even if we are with the most loving and accepting people, this kind of harsh criticism can still exist within us so i'm not going to like um ignore that i'm not going to belittle that i think it is a really really hard struggle to get to that place where you truly feel like you don't have to change anything where you truly feel like you're perfect just the way you are but i just want you to know that in the eyes of this person you are perfect and I know like it's difficult to hear that or to believe that when you're struggling to feel it within yourself but for what it's worth I would just really like you guys to know that I know sometimes I see people worried like what if I meet my soulmate and they're not attracted they're not attracted to me what if I'm not this or that enough for my soulmate or like I need to prepare and change my appearance and glow up so that I'm ready for my soulmate and it's like they already think you're perfect they already think that you're the most beautiful being to walk this earth and if you want to change for yourself because it's going to make you feel better i'm not going to stop you from doing that but it's just sad to see people thinking of this as like a condition to be loved by their soulmate to be accepted by their soulmate like you are already perfect just the same way that your soulmate is already perfect for you like when i think about the people i love i would never want them to change something just for me like they're you're already so precious to me you know like don't do it for me basically is, is what i mean so if you want to change yourself to make yourself feel better to improve on yourself that's amazing but please don't ever feel like this partner or the right people for you would like demand that from you or expect you to do that they're saying like that's just silly <laughs> you are absolutely perfect inside and out in the 5d in the 3d you're incredibly lovable and then our final card is ask ask us to help you in this situation and we will immediately go to work on your behalf we're governed by many universal laws and among them is the free will that allows you to make your own choices and decisions so we patiently await your request this is a message from your angels ask and it is given ask and you shall receive they are waiting for your request they are waiting for you to put in your order for this ten of cups maybe many of you guys would benefit from journaling or scripting about what your ideal future looks like when it comes to who you are as a person when it comes to who your partner is what your life is like your angels are waiting to hear from you they want to hear what it is that you want and they're very very eager to fulfill those wishes for you i love this card so much and it it comes out quite often when i use this deck i think it's something that's really important for us to remember like we don't have to feel bad about asking we don't have to feel guilty about wanting more because there's nothing that would bring our angels more joy than to bring joy to us like your guides love you so so much they love you so much and this person this partner loves you so so much never 
like you rock don't ever change literally <laughs> Um, so on that note, I'm going to end the reading here. These are all the messages that I see for you guys. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. I'm sending you lots of love, I'm sending your person lots of love, sending your guides, their guides, sending your red butterfly <laughs> lots of love, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!